Single Family Design Review Board for November 22nd. Can we have a roll call, please? Oh. Okay, roll call. That's okay, we'll move on. Um, opening up public comment, does anyone want to address the board for an item that's not on today's agenda? Seeing nobody, I will close public comment and return back to item B, which is approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Do we have a first and a second for that? First by Glenn, second by Bernie. And we're reviewing the minutes of the previous single family design board. Any items or comments before item one? Moving on to item one, two, three, four, item five, six, item seven. Item 8, and that was it. So there's no adjustments to the minutes. Seeing none, just double checking. Glenn, did you see anything? No, sir. Okay. Then I'll call for vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes approved as submitted. Moving on to this, the, the consent calendar. Do we have a motion for Monday, November 15th for the minutes? Make the motion. First by Glenn. Second by uh, Mr. Miller, Jim Miller. Um, Zimmerman. Jim. Jim Zimmerman. <laughs> Jim. All right. The consent calendar, November 15th. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, consent agenda for Monday, November 15th, item A, 1001 Coyote Road, approved as submitted of review after final. Item B, 874 West Mountain Drive, final approval as submitted of architecture, continued indefinitely with landscaping comments. Item C, 933 East Haley Street, continued indefinitely due to the applicant's absence. Item D, 1308 San Rafael Avenue, postponed one week due to the applicant's absence. Items reviewed by Glenn Deisler and Aaron Carroll. Great. Any other discussion? Yes. Um, regarding um, item D, 1308 San Rafael. That was two weeks ago, or, and it was uh, continued indefinitely due to the absence of the applicant. Okay, I'm just curious, so it's going straight to consent with a 90% maximum FAR. Now, when it goes to consent, is that going to be kept within the 15-foot setback? And, you know, how would we be able to follow up with no? I believe, um, does staff want to answer that first? Yeah, Bernie, that item was reviewed at full board, and the full board made a motion to continue it to consent. It was reviewed at consent on a couple times. It was continued one week from last week to today's consent agenda and granted final approval with conditions. Okay. If you have any questions. I, you know, I didn't remember if we had or not. Thank you. Okay. So this was for the consent calendar that was last week, which was Monday, November 15th. So she read it. We have a motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Let's move on to the consent calendar of today. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, can we get a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. We need a first and a second for the consent calendar for today. Denise? Second by Aaron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, consent agenda for today, Monday, November 22nd, 2010. Item A, 1308 San Rafael Avenue. Was granted final approval with conditions. Item B, 289 El Cilito Road, approved as submitted of review after final. Item C, 2510 Mesa School Lane, was continued one week to consent. 
Item D, 1531 West Valerio Street, final approval with NPO of architecture and landscaping. Item E, 1234 Bahada Drive, preliminary approval with NPO and continued one week to consent. And item F, 31 Cedar Lane, was granted preliminary approval with NPO findings and continued one week to consent. Items were reviewed by Glenn Deisler and Denise Woolery. Uh, I have one comment on item F. I actually was the reviewer for oh, item yes, F. yes, thank you. Yes, item F was reviewed by Paul Zink. Great. So any other discussion about the consent calendar for today? For today? If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item D of the agenda, which is announcements. Request for app by applicants. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I do have an announcement. I just wanted to make the announcement. The uh, preliminary approval that was granted by the full board of 1308 San Rafael Avenue was um, appealed, and that appeal has been withdrawn by the appellant. Okay. Thank you. And that's all for announcements. Um, I guess I'll ask staff what's next on our list. Mr. Chair, we are going to um, have a quick discussion on the Single Family Design Board guidelines. And I passed out a memorandum for you to give uh, a quick summary of the type of changes that we're making to your document. Um, I want to give you some background first. Um, do you have enough copies? Um, do you have more than one? There were 10 copies. There you go. Um, a little brief background, your guideline document is actually far advanced compared to the ABRs and its Historic Landmarks Commission. And what I mean by that is that because of the Neighborhood Preservation Ordinance update, we've had numerous opportunities to look at your, your guideline document and essentially have it current with respect to the, all the information that we have on uh, the various components of architecture, landscape design, and meeting procedures. Now, what we also did in April of this year is because of the NPO update where we had a two-year progress report. We also took that time to show you a version that would incorporate some of the latest changes that were as a result of the NPO update. Now, since that time, we have asked, actually had um, two uh, major changes that have resulted. One is the landscape maintenance provisions and landscape approval process for tree removals. We have now incorporated some of these changes into your guidelines to make it very clear that these ordinances do govern unprotected trees, as well as what was introduced to the City Council yesterday, or not yesterday, yet last week, uh, with respect to time extensions and changing uh, preliminary approvals to project design approval. That is a uh, terminology change that uh, staff initiated because of the confusion regarding appeals and the, uh, the idea that um, the definition of preliminary uh, it alludes to something more important happening later. Well, as you all know, uh, preliminary approval is, is the critical stage in the, our review process. And so when you grant pr uh, preliminary approval, which will now change as of the first of the next year to project design approval, you'll see that implemented as well on your agendas. You will no longer see preliminary, you'll see project design. Um, that is the stage and level. Uh, that we will uh, place on the agenda. So those uh, typical changes are now going to be incorporated in your guidelines, and I've taken the opportunity to amend the guidelines, uh, as well as when you're dealing with three review boards, we want to have consistency between review boards and how we administer our meetings and have guideline language so we don't get confused between boards. There are some um, nuances because you're dealing with family, single-family residential development. That's not, not necessarily reviewed by the ABR, for example. Uh, but we've tried to go through the document and, be, and make the changes that are necessary in order to be uh, consistent. Now, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to ask if some of the changes are acceptable uh, because uh, there are some nuances again. And um, I think this will take like a five or ten minute exercise if you can bear with me. I'll, I'll proceed through the document. One, one of the things that I sent uh, via email was the strikeout version of the document, and I wanted to go through some of those changes today because I thought uh, some of the comments that I received from the ABR and the Historic Landmarks Commission were relevant. Uh, this is um, 
your design board goals in the cover of your guidelines. Currently, um, the uh, guidelines uh, are pretty consistent with respect to goals. This is one change that the Historic Landmarks Commission and ABR wanted to insert, which is to uh, amend that guideline goal to, to include landscape design. We thought that was a, a does critical aspect of trying to promote high standards also in landscape design. So that's a, a change being proposed to be consistent. Um, also, we've added the last one there, number uh, L. They thought that it was important to uh, understand that one of the goals is also to make the applicants in our review process feel that it's a fair process. So they asked to add um, a goal to ensure that the review process is fair and consistent both in policy and implementation to allow all, all who are involved to benefit from the process. So because the ABR and the Historic Landmarks Commission are making this change, I've also incorporated into your goals. I take it you have no objection to those. Okay. I'm going to go through it quickly. Again, this is administrative cleanup. Just try to make the guidelines uh, consistent. So I'm not going to, everything in blue is, is an amendment, but I'm going to focus in on the changes. Again, preliminary approval was removed. It now has project design approval as a, a stage. We also have included planning commission comment as a stage where you, you make comments uh, at concept between project design approval there. So we've included that. I'm going to go right through and focus in on the, the major changes. That's okay. Sorry, that it's going to take a while, but um, one of the things that we've incorporated into your guidelines is what happens if a structure is historic and how it relates to reviews by our, our other boards. And uh, we've just added some language in there to explain to, to applicants if, in fact, you have a historic residence, you will most likely be dealing with our urban historian as well as going to another board or commission if we determine that the sig uh, significance of the structure warrants it to be uh, a potentially uh, historic, dist um, historic structure. So we've added some reference to that effect. Um, one of the changes that we've made in the administrative approval process, and I want to highlight that change, is what we found in the ordinance is we had a section here that said um, for two stories here, additions minus two stories. Uh, this board has actually approved um, additions up to 250 square feet to be allowed to be approved on a second floor right here by city staff. Well, what we discovered is that those type of additions require notice. Well, we didn't want to notice administrative approvals. So our city attorney recommended that we lower that down to 150 square feet maximum. So we could approve up to 150 instead of 250. I thought that wouldn't be objectionable. We actually have a smaller projects being approved by staff. Okay. If you feel it's relevant to that area, Okay. Uh, like that particular one. So let's say somebody Sorry. that is going to do a 150 square foot second story addition and a deck that's not going to count for anything. How would we monitor that? The, the deck itself um, triggers design review also. That we did not anticipate that necessarily being uh, something that we'd have to refer to the board. If the if the addition has a deck, incorporates a deck, we can clarify that if you want. People might perceive that to be part of the second story and just ch you know add it right in there. One of the qualifiers for for a, 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 uh, for staff being allowed to approve a project it is, is that the project itself has to comply with all design guidelines. And we're fairly aware of the distance requirements and the privacy impacts related to a deck. So if it doesn't comply with that standard, we would typically not have it qualify for administrative approval. We would refer that to the board. Yes, think about adding a little something. Okay. We'll look at whether we could put some kind of footnote that explains that provision. Okay. Just want to highlight a couple more things and... Um, here we have, again, some new language on uh, minor landscape alterations. Because uh, the city of Santa Barbara has actually uh, increased um, the fines associated with uh, tree removals, 
Um, we uh, also are dealing with educating the public on uh, making sure that if they do uh, propose tree removals that they check with the city and if we do have a requirement for design review what we're asking or what we're stating here is that there are there is an ability for minor landscape alterations to be approved administratively we felt that that's the most appropriate way to handle some of these uh, requests in, in some cases if the trees are large and or there is some issues we will refer these to consent for our landscape architects to make those judgments and in some cases we'll be asking for an arbus report but this again adds some additional uh, language to deal with those type of projects that we now have more regulations on Pardon? yes um, speaking of language when i was going through these eighty pages that you know i quickly went through and i wondering how do you define minor tree removal that's in there somewhere mm -hmm. the idea of minor i'm not sure i know what that means well if, if you look along uh, there's actually a couple of sections where we've defined up to three trees as being eligible i believe um, you, you, we, 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 we can debate that i know the historic landmarks commission had some concerns about having the city staff approve multiple um, tree removals uh, so we have this this defined as minor tree removal here Mm -hmm. less than 12 inches of diameter uh, there's no more than three trees are proposed for removal so if you don't agree with that standard then we definitely could we could talk about it the the ABR accepted these without change the historic landmarks Com commission lowered it to one tree yes height okay for the diameter okay we can do that it's typically what we do when we measure that standard for production about that or we could wait till later and talk about it about the number of trees that our board thinks is appropriate. Well, um, rather than return back to the section I'd like to have a either straw vote or have a consensus that there's a, either a need to change it or revise it now. So you're saying that the historic landmarks recommended one at this level? They, they were concerned that in our downtown El Pueblo Viejo Landmark District that there was more concern about maintaining skyline larger trees and um, multiple tree applications for removal. They thought it'd be best to have uh, some scrutiny by our landscape architects. Does any other board member have concern with the way it's presented right now in which it is three trees less than 12 inches in diameter or does the um, people want to have a discussion about that? I also want to qual quant qualify this standard. The city um, did, in fact, um, uh, did not increase the regulatory control on single-family de development. Uh, homes that um, uh, have uh, trees uh, can, in fact, take out trees if they're uh, outside the setback, front yard setbacks. Uh, and the other caveat is... Um, the only way to uh, gain control of these trees is for this board to condition a project that a certain LMB be maintained as a condition of a project approval. So when you look in the context of this uh, guideline, first we have to ascertain whether the tree is protected or not. And for example, if it's in a backyard, it may have no protection whatsoever. The, the, the public can take those tree out, trees out. But if we can tie it to a, an approved landscape plan where this board required those trees to be planted for some reason, then we can regulate them. And that's in the context of what we're talking about. So I don't want the public to uh, assume that we're looking at every tree removal throughout the city. We are not. Because uh, Bernie raises a, a, a question and Jaime says, well, what's the rest of the board's opinion on, on the issue? I can jump in, but I'm going to jump in last. They want you all to have an opportunity if you have a comment or concern, and if you don't, it's fine just the way it is. Let's move forward. But here's an opportunity to say something if people have a comment. Jaime, yeah. does this apply to street trees? No. Those are just on private property. And again, those that are deemed to be uh, subject to protection, which are typically front yard setback trees. Your mic on. And that's exactly why um, we're, we're limited to some degree. The city did not want to actually propose a, um, 
a tree preservation ordinance that would protect all oak trees in the city. Although when you review projects in the course of uh, your, your reviews, the city has strict conservation policies with respect to protection of oak, oak trees and oak woodlands. Um, but it has to be a discretionary decision before the city. The confusion that the applicants or the public has that said somehow they feel that all oaks are protected. Well, that's uh, uh, those type of protections are found elsewhere, maybe in county or Montecito ordinances, but the city has chosen not to uh, go that far. Mm -hmm. Okay. Glenn? Um, the line right underneath the three trees is talking about specimen trees. No specimen tree is to be removed. What is a specimen tree? Uh, the city ordinances do define specimen trees, and typically they are uh, designated either by our city arborist and are defined. To, uh, and I think right now we have maybe a, a dozen or so that are defined as specimen. But typically they're older, established, uh, unique type of trees throughout the city that uh, have been identified as such. That they have to be designated a specimen tree. But it's a, it's a system of it's already been classified as a specimen tree. That's correct. The, the boards can also ask that they be designated a specimen tree. If you see a tree of, of large size and uniqueness, um, the, you can, there's two ways to, to designate them. To designate them as a historic landmark tree or a specimen tree. Those are the two uh, abilities in our ordinances to, to protect these trees. Um, any other comments from other people? Because I'm actually personally okay with, with the way it's worded with three trees less than 12 inches in diameter because it has a phrase in there about that, um, that do not significantly alter or remove landscaping from a site. And so we're giving some judgment to the staff at the counter level to make that decision. Um, and I think that is fine. HLC has a higher concern because they're dealing with a smaller geographic area and there's not much landscaping to begin with in the downtown core. So having them reduce it to one sounds appropriate for the HLC, but for this board. One of the things that we considered adding to this section is whether or not we needed to put replacement standards. But we found that there was a wide variety of uh, requests based on various factors, and to automatically require a replacement tree is, doesn't make sense sometimes. So we know uh, as staff that that's the general direction our boards have liked to have us condition a project. So we, we do ask that certain trees be replaced if possible that we have not placed that as necessarily a condition. Okay. Chair, if I may. Um, uh, so on uh, part three there, number three, suitable replacement trees are proposed consistent with part two of these guidelines. Um, what is that referring to in part two since I don't have it right It, it of talks me. about the mitigation measures and the considerations of when you, where and how you plant trees. Okay. And, so, and that includes like the oak trees and yes. any tree basically. Right. Well, I'm, I'm fine with this, given that the 12 inch in diameter is a pretty young tree that's not going to be a very substantial uh, tree. Okay. So if you don't mind, the, basically the board is fine with the way the proposal is, but we did have a discussion if you want okay. to move on. Okay. Let me just move on. There's only a couple sections, and I do want to replace some definition for publicly visible. I think that came out of the NPO. As far as projects being publicly visible, let's, I think it has to do now with um, the only change I wanted to talk to you about were landscape is pretty consistent again with previously uh, discussed items. Um, yeah, this is again uh, landscape shown on site plans where the city can require a separate plan um, for se separate landscape approvals for minor projects. I'm going to go to the last section I wanted to speak to you about. This is the conditions of approval maintenance requirement that we've added, inserted. Again, if you feel a tree is important that you're asking to be required as part of the project approval, we need to put that on record either as part of the motion or on the plans, or else that tree one day can be removed. Meeting procedures. This is um, details out our meeting procedures. I wanted to go over a couple of things that are changing. Um, again, um, planning commission comments, project design approval. This is what the, the recent changes that are being proposed. 
it just explains how that relates to your project. And sorry, this gets a little difficult to read when I'm scrolling, but. Here it is. Okay, there's an area here on time limits on approvals. This is another change that the city is implementing with respect to time extensions. Previously, you could get a one-year time extension on a preliminary approval. Now the, the city has altered uh, the time frames to bring, begin the uh, approval process and the extension timeline to start at preliminary or project design approval. So now you will have three years from the time you get a, a preliminary or project design approval uh, to get a building permit and to begin construction. Um, you also have an ability to get, to get one time year, two year time extension. So essentially up to five years. We feel that's adequate time for a project development to um, get a building permit from that time. So what we've um, also uh, said to our boards is make sure that if you grant a project design approval, which is your preliminary approval step now, that that will in fact allow these applicants to move forward for a period of up to five years. That's a very important um, item. The other thing re with respect to extensions, we used to require projects uh, to come back to these review uh, for these review bodies to get uh, approvals on final approval extensions. We don't believe that's a, 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 an appropriate process. Um, the reason is that we've had difficulty sometimes with the a different board now. Uh, sitting to review a project that was approved many years ago and having this the new board want to, wanting to reconsider the approval. Uh, the city attorney has recommended us eliminate that provision and to be consistent with other discretionary decisions where the city staff takes on that role to grant extensions if they're appropriate. So now again this uh, approval process and extension process is really uh, combined into one uh, one extension where the city staff takes that role. I don't know if you disagree with that, but that's what we're moving forward uh, with. I think it'll allow applicants to have more time too, which is what we're hearing in this economy, that people feel like um, it's difficult sometimes to get through our review process and uh, get approvals. Okay. Uh, Bernie. Yeah, just, I just want to clarify a couple things because it's a lot of information you know and I want to make sure the public can follow it as well um, so are we saying that the projects that we see are going to for this board come to us for project design not preliminary approval and then where do they get the preliminary approval it's it's a terminology change think of it as you know the old preliminary will now be project design approval that's all it is. So when they have the project design approval now, which they're getting here, then they're only coming here to us once or twice or three times, and then when it's approved, then they're not coming back again. No, there, 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 there's still a final approval required after project design approval, but typically the project or the final approval will be uh, confirmation that the project design approval uh, design is consistent with that that original approval and review of final re details. In other words, if you send it off after project design approval, the assumption is you're going to approve this project and all you're just going to do is be reviewing the final details, the architectural details, the landscape details, and structural details that they, they provide that, those, that information. So nothing's necess necessarily changed. We're just talking about terminology. And hopefully, again, when you grant project design approval, people will understand that that's the decision they need to appeal uh, if they want to appeal this pro project. They don't wait for final. They will actually appeal the project design approval. Great. Any other discussion, comments? Jaime, would you mind scrolling to page 41? Um, or, uh, go back. It's items um, 210A. Yes. It says HLC prior to the HLC agenda. It should be single. That should be a change. I'll, I'll fix that. All right. Again, we're trying to get it all consistent in, in Moving and pasting so it's identical language, I think we, fine. we're, we're going to do a, ch a double check on it. And uh, one last thing also, with respect to reconsiderations, because there are some limits as far as the time involved in reconsiderations, our city attorney is reviewing that language, and I've deleted some of the language in this, the copy I sent you, only because I wanted you to understand that 
it's being stricken out because it's being revised right now. So when it gets edited, I'll be coming to this board and explaining the actual steps involved for this board to want to cons reconsider an item. There will be very tight limits on how long you could wait in order to ask for a reconsideration. And um, it's only uh, because it's in fairness to the applicant, we can't have a, a, a reconsideration be extended beyond a specific time. So I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that that, that, that section is going to be revised, and I'll return back to explain that provision. Great. That concludes my presentation. All right. Any other discussion from the board for Heinrich? Thank you very much. We will move on to item one, which is 1233 Mission Ridge Road. And this is a new project description, so I'm going to read the description for the record while we set up. This is a proposal to demolish the existing residence, accessory building, and detached garage totaling 2,847 square feet and, and construct two new single-family residences on a 31,584-square-foot lot in the Hillside Design District. The proposal includes, a one, includes Unit 1 as a 3,000 796 square foot two story single family residence with an attached 407 square foot two car garage, 192 square foot workshop, and 674 square foot covered patio, 50 square foot second story deck, pool, spa, hardscape, and retaining walls. Unit 2 is proposed as a 920 square foot one story additional dwelling unit with a 459 square foot two car garage and 125 square foot storage area attached to the main house. Staff hearing officer approval of the performance standard permit is requested to allow the additional dwelling unit per the building code or municipal code. The proposed total of 4,395 square feet for unit one is 99.9% .9 of the maximum guideline floor to lot area ratio. The proposed total of 1,504 square feet for Unit 2 is 34% of the maximum guideline floor to area, lot area ratio. So let me turn on these mics real fast. That one, this, if you can push your ov that oval. Great, if we have your name for the record in your presentation. Oh, wait, your name for the record and then we'll read the minutes of the previous meeting. <laughs> right. fine. Um, hi, I'm Mark Shields. Uh, Architect representing Design Arc. Okay. Tom Sanborn, uh, applicant. Barbara Sanborn. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, the, the comment from the previous hearing was to continue, continued indefinitely to full board, and the comment was to re significantly reduce the square footage. That was the only comment. All right. So you're up. <laughs> well, it's good to be back, and... Uh, Thanks for your patience. We've been working on the plan for a couple months now, and uh, basically today I want to prove that we've been good listeners. <laughs> um, I think I want to go back in time a little bit. I think that the first review, um, you also mentioned that you, kind of, you, liked your, you liked the architecture. It was just that the house seemed too, too large. So we've been focusing on that. And to start off, I wanted to present... Is the camera working? Is the TV up? There you are. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. To start off, um, I wanted to present a little chart that we did to uh, show you uh, how much we've reduced the square footage of the house. We really took, took it to heart that the house seemed too large and sharpened our pencils and had some um, soul searching and decided to eliminate a few rooms and really reduce the square footage as best we could and still um, maintain the design integrity that we liked before. So um, in general, we've been able to reduce the entire square footage of the house by about 1,700 square feet, which we believe is significant. Um, and then we took a look at, well, okay, if we reduce the house 1,700 square feet, and our house is now 3,796 square feet, what are the sizes of houses in the neighborhoods surrounding us? And this chart points out that there are quite a few homes, and those are the homes delineated in gray. Ours is a striped property. They're actually larger um, than, our, than our house now. So we feel that we've been able to reduce the size so that we're relatively compatible um, with the neighborhood. At the same time, 
we are at or below the required um, city FAR guideline as well. So with that being said, I'd like to oops, remind to a quick little um, introduction just to remind everybody where we are uh, in Santa Barbara. <laughs> Of course, this project is up on the beautiful Riviera. This is uh, Mission Ridge Road going up over Los Alturas. Green Ridge Lane, <clears throat> which dead ends at our property, which is right here. It's the existing residence, existing guest house. And Would you uh, mind if I rotate this to sure. match the same orientation sure. as that drawing? Please do. If you don't mind, let's put this yeah. back up here for a quick, quick Please sec so people can do. see. Green Ridge Lane, high, high rain. Green Ridge. Ridge and Arbolada. Arbolada. So then that's this orientation. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, a, it's a unique site on the Riviera because it's relatively flat. It's like 8.9% it's like slope. Um, also, it's uh, about 31,500 square feet, which is about a quarter of an acre. And uh, it has some unique... I was going to say, that's a three quarters. Three quarters. Uh, three quarters. Excuse me. Three quarters. <laughs> Figuring that. <laughs> I'm going to rush things. And also on the site, we're lucky to have uh, a little outcropping of uh, two beautiful large oak trees. And these are the photos, one on a sunny day and then one on a uh, not so sunny day, but uh -huh. a couple of really beautiful oaks that have always been part of our overall site planning and thinking. And those are located right here? Those, those two oaks are here. The larger one is actually here and the smaller one is here, but they're both fairly large. Um, let's see. So now I'd like to demonstrate how we've lost this significant amount of square footage. Tom, I'm grabbing that. And just for the record, you brought a different set of drawings from the it's ones. It's actually the same. They're the same. That's They're all. They're exactly I need. the same. You said. Just it. have some notes on here. So moving forward to the site plan, um, there's a couple ways we've been able to reduce the overall mass bulk and scale. And uh, I want to say that, or remind everybody that we were remo we're removing the existing guest house and relocating it as a second residence to the north, northern, northeastern portion of the property. We're also removing the existing two-car garage um, completely because it's non-conforming in the setbacks. So um, adding two more garages that are appropriate for the, the two residential units. Um, we've been able to go around the entire design and shrink rooms room by room as well as eliminating some rooms. We've eliminated what used to be the breakfast room. And this, this outline, which is the dotted outline, was the prior um, footprint from our last submittal. So if you look at that, you can see we've been able to shrink the house from the east, from the south, from the west, and a little bit from the north as well. Uh, let's see. We lost the breakfast room, and we've actually also been able to reduce the overall amount of paving by 1,600 square feet. By shrinking the overall footprint of the house, we've also been able to shift it a little bit more easterly towards the two large oaks. And I think Aaron Carroll had a comment about that last time, trying to open up a little bit more landscaping space to the west, which we've been able to do. Uh, I think Denise mentioned something about the idea of planting a few trees as well on the northern property line, which we have plenty of room to do so. And I think we'll study that more if, if we get as far as a preliminary approval. I think the elevations actually best show how we've been able to reduce the overall mass, bulk, and scale. If you take a look at the southern elevation, the dotted outline, which is here, was where we were at the last submittal. And what we've done is we've eliminated um, some space upstairs, about 1,000 square feet, in, overall, in order to reduce the ridge height of the project. That included 
an office space and a bridge from the second bedroom to the master bedroom. So you can see we've really been able to reduce the ridge heights as well as a large portion of the massing that was to the west of the um, project. We've also studied it in section and in plan and we've stepped down the western wing um, with the topography of the site to the west. So this space has been opened up considerably. Our two-story element still abuts the taller element on the site, which is our, our two beautiful oak trees. Let me show where, where the west on the easterly side, uh, we eliminated the breakfast room, which allowed the, the whole mass to, to move slightly to the, to the east. This little dotted line, which I failed to see earlier, um, was what enabled us to shift the building more easterly. So that's been removed. The west elevation indicates more clearly where we've dropped the massing considerably, where the old office and bridge to the second story master bedroom occurred, as well as stepping down the, the bedroom um, the bedroom to the west here, as well as the one story element of the attached garages. The north elevation elevation actually points out the reverse of the southern elevation where we had again the removal of the uh, breakfast room which allowed us to shift the building more easterly as well as the reduction in ridge height and massing to the west as well as the stepping of the house and section to the westerly property line. The east elevation um, is a study and actually some nice architectural elements where we're going more vertical where our two-story elements um, are adjacent to the oaks. The, there's a nice uh, wood mirror door that we've added off the master bath, and as well as a very light trellis that wraps around the breakfast room at the uh, lower floor. And we've also, I might point out, point out completely eliminated the second-story um, deck off the master bedroom, as we promised to do at our last meeting. I believe at the last session you also asked us to uh, study a site section. So we constructed this section through the more westerly portion of the property. And I think it points out clearly how our property um, goes relatively flat and then the Riviera steps up behind it and below it. It also points out how our more westerly section is, is predominantly one story and actually steps down with the hillside to the western, northwestern corner of the lot. This section elevation, which is actually taken through the house, points out where, again, we've eliminated um, ridge lines and, and shrunken the house or lowered it, as well as where we've moved the loggia back from the southerly property line as well. We're still um, in love with our motor court and carriage house design, which is reminiscent of the 30s and, and something that Wallace Neff might have done in the old days, as well as our portal entry, which I think you guys responded to fav favorably at our very first meeting. So we've been able to overall shrink the house substantially and still retain some of these nice architectural features. And just to... Um, quickly inform you about the second residence. It hasn't changed. It's still in the same location. These are the elevations. Um, we do have a nice uh, steel clear, clear story or a, an artist studio window facing north just to give that living room space a little bit more light. And Tom, if you could flip back to the front, I'd appreciate that. I'd like to kind of end the presentation with our illustration of the portal entry which, and if we could borrow that as well, the site plan. Before you wrap up, go over mm -hmm. the second floor too, just briefly. In, in, plan, in, plan? in sure. plan view, you went over the sure. first floor. Sure. Let's see if I can get yeah. that. Is this one, that is a one more call? Okay. Okay. okay, first floor is a three bedroom house, and the second floor, primarily, there's a two story element, which is the master shown here, which is up against the oaks. This section or floor cut through the second bedroom up is actually below this ridge line. 
but we had to show it somehow, so we cut it here. It's actually a split level, so this goes up seven feet or so lower than this, this bedroom. So we were able to reduce the ridge height completely and have only one two-story element which is in conformance with the uh, design review guidelines where we're running the ridge line north-south and not east-west. So we tried to keep the ridge line east-west to a minimum. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. And then going back to finish up at the portal entry. We're still excited about our portal entry and we've been kind of noodled on a little bit and we actually shrank the depth of it so that we were able to move it back from the western property line quite a bit more. We reduced the height by about a foot and also added this rotunda curved element um, which breaks the scale down just a little bit more and I think gives it a nicer, more comfortable, slightly more artistic uh, residential feel to it. So really happy with that and hope you guys uh, like all the changes we've made. Um, I'd like to ask Tom if there's anything else he'd like to add. Actually, I think you hit all of the, the, the hot points. Rather than go into anything more specific, if we could reserve maybe just yeah. a couple minutes if somebody has their questions answered at the end of the public comment. Will do. Great. All right. Thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, we've had some previous uh, questions directed about the performance standard provisions of our ordinance, okay. as well as the way staff has calculated floor area ratios on this property. So staff is prepared to answer those questions if they come up again. Okay. Is there anything else you want to make before we go in comment wise before we go to public comment? No. I, I well, let's listen to public comment, and if okay. those issues are raised again, staff is prepared to answer great. those questions. If we can have people sit in that one chair, that'd be great. Um, I'll call two people's names. The first one will be Mark Cielato. And then the second speaker will be Judy. D Thank you. And uh, Judy Denzola. Den Den Denzola. And you can pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all right. It's Mark Shatillo. And I'm here on behalf of the Denenholtz family, and they live uh, one house over, not immediately next door, but um, yeah, thank you. Uh, hold your thought for a quick moment. Sure. Is there a house yeah. on this photograph? Yes, uh, and Ms. Denenholtz will be here. It's this house okay. right, uh, right there. Thank you much. Um, we have a few requests of you today. We, we, would ask, we believe that the project's not quite ready for positive comments, so we would ask... A little closer to the mic. We, would, we would ask that, um, that your board continue this uh, to, first of all, a non-holiday week so that uh, other, we can have a, a, a full engagement of the community, but also to address uh, uh, some revisions that we think are appropriate to be included in the renderings that you have before you, and finally, to include a story poll uh, process so that uh, the community, the neighbors in particular, uh, can have a much better sense of what this is going to mean to them. I think uh, everybody understands that this is uh, an important property and one that uh, the Sanborns have uh, are, are going to try and do a good job with, and we want to make that uh, a reality for everyone. A couple of process concerns. Um, first of all, the, the renderings don't show the second residence along with the first residence in the elevations. And one of the, that's one of the concerns that we have is that it's missing the mass and bulk of that second residence. So we would request that, that the renderings be revised so that they reflect that. Um, secondly, the story poll would be very helpful. And in particular, we think that it's necessary to have ribbons or tapes uh, at the ridge heights, uh, not just at plate height and not just individual poles, but actually something that will show what the, the ridge lines are going to look like uh, for the community. Um, the third process concern is uh, around the floor area ratio, the FAR. Um, we've not been able to review the survey that's reportedly in the, in the file, and that does go to the uh, acceptability or the propriety of uh, this size of a house on this size of a lot. There's a, uh, a conflict in the information that is in the file. It's 28,000 square feet or it's 31,000 square feet, and that really needs to be resolved, and we understand that it, it will be an issue before the show, um, however, and, and uh, it's, there's ambiguity as to whether that's been definitively established or not, and we'd like to review the survey and be able to satisfy ourselves. Um, secondly, on the FAR issues, the, 
process that staff has proposed is to assume a split of the lot and to divide the different structures. And some of the garage and workshops are assigned to the primary residence, whereas some of the other structures are assigned to the secondary residence, for example, the trash. It, it, it seems to be a fairly arbitrary process, and we think that the FAR should be uh, evaluated in the context of all of the buildings on the site and in the context of the entire site square footage. Uh, to lump them together. And if they are going to be divided, um, it doesn't make sense to take continuously connected structures such as the two garages with the workshop in between and to separate those out and assign those FARs, some to the second house and some to the first house. Um, and finally, we'd, we'd hope that we, had a, uh, that we will have an amplified good neighbor process in the future because we've been unable to review the plans until uh, on Friday we got notice of this, of this hearing and so um, endeavored to get a copy of the plans, but we've not been able to get a copy to take to the site to review. A um, couple of quick building comments. Um, the, the, the second residence was modified. Um, it does, they added a second bathroom. That's my job, actually. I'm, I'm and sorry. Just, just wrap it up. I'm being clear. Uh, okay. Um, we've seen reports of oak tree trimming, and we think that that needs to be reported on. Um, we think that the front of the building still has uh, a continuous massing effect and, and therefore is not compatible. So thank you very much for your, your time, and we hope that we can have a chance to look at these plans before we give you our final comments. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next person is Judy Den Denenholtz, followed by Keith Rivera. Hi, my name is Judy Denenholz. My husband David and I own 1225 Mission Ridge Road. Um, Mark Chitello's comments, um, we support what he has um, suggested. One of the things that we have a concern about is the process that's being followed in terms of how much notice and opportunity to review plans is being provided to the neighbors. I believe there's a process in uh, the good neighbor process, and it doesn't appear that that has been followed very, um, very well. And we would like to encourage that that, that be done. Um, I think that could go a long way towards helping to resolve um, issues that may exist about whether or not uh, how everything is working on the lot. Obviously, they're trying to build a, a, a nice home, and the neighborhood appreciates that, but we'd like it to be in conformance with the neighborhood. Um, the story poles, I believe there were story poles once before, but they apparently went up and came down very quickly. So one of the requests we would make also is that they, the poles would remain long enough so that we could have an the neighbors can have an opportunity to see what they're um, actually proposing. Um, I think also in the good neighbor policy, there's a provision for a workshop where they're supposed to have the neighbors come together and have a discussion with the um, applicant to understand what it is that's being proposed and the considerations. And that seems like that would be a very um, good idea. Um, the safety and fire issues for a second dwelling in a high fire um, area are of great concern to the neighbors. It's a private lane, it's a small lane, there's not a lot of turnaround, um, and we're in a high fire, so to add a whole second dwelling seems um, something to be, I think it's not consistent with the general plan, although I know it's being revised. Um, so we look forward to working with the Sanborns as they um, continue with the process of building their, their home. Thank you. And thank you for your time. Keith Rivera will be followed by Aylin Train, Trail. Aylin Trail. Thank you, Keith Rivera. I'm representing uh, the neighbors to the immediate south, the Ganeys. Can you? Immediate south is this house. Correct. Right. Okay. And as we talked about last time, the Ganeys' primary concern is um, potential <coughs> privacy impacts uh, to their property. Um, we had a chance to look at the revised plans the other day at the counter. We're really appreciative of uh, a lot of the design moves uh, to that regard, pushing it uh, further away from the Ganey property, removal of the second floor deck. Um, and so we think those are all positive things heading in the, in the right direction as far as the uh, privacy concerns of the Ganeys. We would request that uh, story poles be uh, placed up so that uh, everyone can really visualize um, any potential privacy uh, concerns. And I think that has to do primarily with the large uh, second floor kind of uh, fenestration off the master bedroom. There's the kind of faux balcony sort of thing. So we would request that the story poles um, have some representation of that. So again, the Ganeys could visualize where exactly that large window is relative to their uh, 
open space and, and second floor bedrooms. Okay. But, Thank uh, you. Again, we're um, you know we're encouraged with the uh, design changes so far. Thank you very much, Alan. Uh, Alan Trail, followed by Beverly Johnson Trail. I'm sorry, I'm saying these not quite correctly. <coughs> Happy trails <laughs> Are you speaking for both people? Yes. I, okay. If there's somebody who wants to come in between, so no, you don't no, you're mean, fine. Two okay, minutes okay. a person. Okay. Um, this is which house my husband's. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a 1218 High Ridge Lane, which is this, this home right here. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, today, I would like to. Uh, Again, this is uh, my husband, Alan Trial. Uh, today I would like to address two issues with the proposed development at 1233 Mission Ridge Road, the scale of the proposed development and the character of the neighborhood. Um, first, it, uh, it, excuse me, um, they seem to be building houses on two separate lots. As far as I am aware, the property is a single lot. Therefore, the method that they are using is improper and does not give a true sense of the scale and bulk of this development. The FAR for the development as a whole is 122% of the maximum guideline FAR. As uh, I discussed at the last meeting, such a development is discouraged according to SFDB guidelines. It is also considerably greater than the recommended target of 85% of the maximum guideline FAR. Second, I would like to remind the board members of the character of this neighborhood. I have used the applicant's 20 closest home study, um, excluding their property and one other property that lists the incorrect house and garage size. The average size of these 18 parcels is 21,817 square feet. The average size of the house plus garage on these parcels is 3,585 square feet. This is 84% of maximum guideline FAR. As you can see, the character of the neighborhood is in line with the recommended target of 85% of the maximum guideline FAR. Three properties that significantly exceed the maximum guideline FAR look like they are overdeveloped. We do not need another such property in the, in the neighborhood. Although the applicants have made um, progress since their last submission to this board, it should still be rejected. Okay. Is what you're going to say different from your husband? Yes. Okay, if you can wrap that up. Yes, exactly. Um, and some of my uh, thunder has already been stolen by some other people. Then you don't uh, need to repeat it. No, I will not. Uh, story <laughs> polls. Okay, two words. Yes. Um, and uh, I would like to see an actual survey done. Uh, this from Macomber surveying that was done in June of, uh, of this year is simply uh, numbers crunching. And it's almost a 3,000 square foot difference between the Penfield and Smith survey that was done in August of 1947 and the number crunching of, uh, of this one, uh, which is a huge error for a small parcel. Uh, and we, s we still need to consider the needs of the frail uh, older couple who are going to be deprived of their view. Uh, you, you addressed last time. And from the general plan on secondary dwelling units, it says that uh, second units should be prohibited in high fire yeah, hazard area. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes, I please. just wanted to correct the madam. The, that provision does not apply to this. This is an additional dwelling unit. That's one of the clarifications I wanted to make. It's a performance standard permit which allows an additional dwelling unit. It's totally different than a secondary dwelling unit. So it is allowed in this area. Of the city. This is a performance standard permit request, which is a special provision on our zoning ordinance, which allows a lot which is large enough to propose a, an additional dwelling unit. It's totally different than the uh, secondary dwelling unit provisions, which do prohibit a granny unit in a uh, high fire area. So I just wanted to clarify that the ordinance, uh, the city ordinances, do allow this type of a second additional dwelling unit. Except that this dwelling unit is illegal. That is the proposal to legalize it. That They are allowed to propose legalization of the unit. That is allowed by our zoning ordinance. 
Uh, so I, I don't want to get into a, uh, a debate okay. about it, but I just okay. wanted to clarify the record. Thank you for jumping in like that. And if you don't mind me jumping in yes. or for all the rest of the speakers, there are certain things that we talk about, which is the, 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 the design review and the foo-foo stuff. The square footage of the mm -hmm. lot size is important, but that's outside of what we do. We just take a number that somebody provides and we crunch it or they do it. But I'll have staff address those other issues, but there are certain things that this board doesn't get involved in and that one of them is lot size. So um, okay. is that about all? Yes, that's Thank it. Thank you very and much. There you are. Thank you. Sarah Lytle, followed by Lamaz Green. Or is he? Laramie. Laramie? Okay. Hi, I'm Sarah Lytle, and my husband, Fred Davis, and I live at 1191 Los Alturas Road. Is your house on this aerial? I think we're right, right just about here. Okay. like a bit of our landscaping might be. This right corner there a lot. Thank you. Yes. And um, I'm in favor of the project. I think architecturally it's beautiful, a very pleasing, nice addition to the Riviera. And um, it seems a lot of, well, I wasn't at the last meeting, but it, it seems a lot of effort and uh, consideration has been given to the neighborhood with the the lowering of the of the roof line and et cetera. So um, just want to say well, thank Yay. you for coming and speaking. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Green. Lars. <laughs> All right. Hello. My name is Laramie Green. And uh, I would like to oh, I'd show you my house. This here. residence. Okay. I'm at 1301 Los Alturas. And I would also like to show my support for the Sanborns proposed residence. Uh, I had a, the chance to see both set of plans, the original set of plans and then the new revised smaller set. And I think it's fantastic. I, clearly you don't see them from the road. So I think the overall massing is appropriate to me. It's not, um, it's not on the front of a road. You're not seeing a lot of it. There's a lot of trees around it. And it's a beautiful job. Thank you for coming down. Okay. All right. Are there any other speakers? Seeing none, I will close public comment. And I'll just say for the people that are in item two, we'll be about another half an hour. As you can tell, we're behind schedule, and this is a big project, and it's important. And um, it's just what's going to happen today. Okay, Mr. Chair. Oh, public record, comment. Um, yes. I'd just like to acknowledge a letter of concern from Ms. Paul Westbury. Now I will close public comment and return it back to the board for questions of staff. And I had two questions, and one of them had to do with lot area, and the other one had to do about a workshop. Um, has staff reviewed the lot area discussion that the speaker made reference to? Mr. Chair, I think what they're referencing to is that one of the first questions we asked, because we also were alerted to the discrepancy in lot sizes, was um, to get some certification from a surveyor on the calculations for the lot size. We did get a um, calculation submitted by a surveyor, but we have not received the actual uh, uh, calculation on a topography map that, that um, um, can certify that these calculations can be verified. So that's the second component. We'll do that before it gets to the uh, staff hearing officer to make sure that we have those confirmed. Okay, cool. And then the other thing, if you can just for the record talk about what a workshop is, when the project is having over 100% FAR, is that when a neighborhood workshop is required or requested? No, Mr. Mr. Chair, what we uh, have uh, included in our guidelines is uh, good neighbor uh, policies and one of the suggestions to um, establish that good rapport with neighbors is to offer a workshop where you invite the neighbors to your home or you offer them ability to review the plans in advance of, of the hearing. The idea, again, is to offer them some ability to educate themselves on the proposal rather than come here worried that somehow their concerns have not been uh, addressed adequately. It's not necessarily a requirement when it's a guideline project. I think our, our um, focus was primarily understanding that when it's a regula regulation on, a, on lots less than 15,000 square feet that there would be a higher degree of concern and impact to neighbors. Here you have the ability uh, that um, the owners can offer that as, as a, but it's not a requirement. So 
Uh, I think the com combination of concern that neighbors have that they don't have enough, have enough time to review the plans is often something that comes up. That we, we do not offer a 10 day advance notice on every project as you, uh, uh, mm -hmm. review. That's unfortunate, but they, they have to be on top of it to, to, to understand uh, the type of changes that are, are evolving in the and project. Just to reiterate what you just said is that because this lot is greater than 15,000 square feet, it is a d um, guideline versus a requirement. That's for the correct, MAR. and there's much greater latitude with respect to how you calculate um, and how you ascertain whether it's appropriate for the neighborhood. It's okay. more custom because the variation of lot sizes exists here. Okay, thank you very much. Does um, the board have questions of the applicant or of staff? Mr. Chair, um, I think there was some reference either by neighbors or even the applicant about an FAR study. Oops. And there was a FAR sheet that was kind of passed here. Um, Is that the one that you were referring to? I think to? so. Is this prepared by the applicant? Yes. Okay. Um, is there one that actually is set up by FAR, not by square footage? Let me see. There's two tables in the Excel spreadsheet thing. Oh. I've got a few of these. Yeah, Tom. And kind of a follow-up is, oh. okay, there's a second one that just was delivered. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and I'm, we're just seeing it for the first time right now. And this chart is prepared by the unit one square footages only? No, the, at, at the uh, bottom is the second uh, unit as well. Okay. So here's unit two down here, and here's unit one up here. Has there been one prepared that has a combined FAR, a combined square footage? N no, because that's not, that's, Jaime can answer that. Mr. Chair, I want to clarify that because um, there wasn't actually a uh, procedure set up for a performance standard permit application. When we uh, set up our uh, FAR ordinance and guidelines, the, uh, we understood that there could be non-conforming situations where you had two homes on a, a single family lot and we, we were trying to deal with that uh, reality. That um, the uh, original uh, project description incorporated both homes and created one FAR. Um, that um, was felt to be unfair to the applicant because in fact this project does qualify to have two homes on it. So it was felt that it would be better to adequately divide the lot into two lots and propose two FAR numbers. One for the smaller home and one for the larger home. One could combine it, you're still going to be essentially uh, dealing with a large house. And we felt that since there was already direction also to um, reduce the home size, it really didn't come, I don't, we don't believe it's going to be an FAR number. We're going we're gonna to hope to have the SFD decide size, bulk, and scale here in relationship to what they're proposing. Okay. My, my thoughts were just for comparison purposes to other neighbors other uh, are they broken up into well the unusual FARs? part about it is you, you probably wouldn't be comparing two homes to two homes I, I, we don't believe there are other homes uh, that would have a, a, enough comparables to have two homes to be compared mm -hmm. to two homes mm -hmm. but if you wanted to see two homes compared to other one home projects you, you could make that comparison all right Another question. Has you the may? fire department, have you had any discussions with the fire department? Yes, we have a letter um, f recommending the project from the fire chief, from Jim Austin, if you'd like to see it. So your, your word for now is good enough until later. You got it, yeah. The city has it too. Okay. Questions from other people? Um, On your bike box? Thanks. I appreciate the, uh, the redesign. That you did a good job of bringing the bridge down. Questions? The 1,700 square feet, uh, what percentage of that was on the second floor? About a little bit over 1,000 square feet, actually. Mm -hmm. Actually, we did that by eliminating um, a couple of rooms. There's no balconies or decks on the second floor. 
There are. Um, there's, a, there's a small balcony, balcony off the master looking south, which is there and there. Another balcony off the other bedroom upstairs as well. Beautiful, definitely moving in the right direction. I had a question. Somebody mentioned that did you have story poles up at one time, or was that not? Or uh, we, we, we put up story poles to, to um, give the neighbor to the south a, a better sense of um, where, where the massing of that house would be. Um, we've, we've been able to move that second story element since then a little further to the east. We wanted to offset it from their house. There is a, a gap, maybe if we went to the, uh, the aerial photo. There's a gap where their house ends, sorry, um, that, that we wanted to place the second story element so it wasn't looking into their back, but, but uh, through, through, this, uh, through this gap. Um, and, and so that, that, that is what we've, what we've done. And since then, since those poles went up, it's actually moved back about seven feet too. So, right. And of course, we've eliminated the the, 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 deck. the deck off off the, the master. Okay, Questions from other board members. I'll ask it one more time, and then we'll move to comments. No questions. All right, comments. Aaron, you ready to jump in? I think you've done a nice job of responding to our comments. Um, I think story poles will be a good thing to have for the neighbors, but I'm pretty happy with what I see. Okay. I have, to, I have to comments. Are you done? Yeah. Good. Mr. Miller. Yeah, I really want to compliment you on the quality of the design of this architecture and that you brought it down quite a bit. Um, I have a personal feeling of regarding the FARs. Um, and I think we all really need to keep in mind that FERs were created kind of as a barometer of making sure we can get an idea that the scope and the scope and the scale of the house is compatible to the neighborhood. That doesn't necessarily mean that if it goes over 85 percent, we need to you know beat people's heads over there you know for the numbers. And personally, I love the design, and I really my feeling is it's actually going to complicate complement the neighborhood and actually increase the value of the surrounding neighborhoods, especially where you have this gate system. And I love the way how you remodeled it. I think that shows a lot of creativity and imagination. Um, I'm very happy with your design. And that's critical. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're going to build a house really big, it has to look good in the neighborhood. And I really feel that this, you've hit it to a T. And, you know, you're lucky you've got a, a, a property this large that you could have two units. So you have an a double responsibility to make sure the two units work together and I really feel looking at the aerial and looking at the surrounding homes that these do work together. So that's my comment. Alrighty. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Um, I think you've done a really good job uh, the second floor um, aligning the, the ridges so that you, you do get, you get some see-throughs instead of running one straight across. Uh, I like the design. I think it's very well done. Um, and it will be interesting to see the start poles. But uh, I think it's a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Denise? I agree with everything here that's been said so far. Um, I think that, especially in the south elevation, the difference in ridge lines between what was proposed originally and now is huge, and that the architecture is really beautiful um, and I look forward to seeing this project move forward. Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, I'll echo pretty much everybody's comments. I think the design is, is really, really good and the reduction in scale is, has been enormous. Um, I think the story poles, and I'm assuming that we're going to require them, um, are going to kind of put everybody's concerns, you know, at ease, I hope. Um, or it will raise some other issues. I mean, it'll just it'll just be the next step that needs to occur. 
and I would would love to see some additional landscaping elements that you had talked about, so, and I right. think that mm -hmm. development will be helpful as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bernie, are you almost ready with some comments? Yeah, I'm ready. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think I'm on here. Yeah. Uh, in general, I, I think it's an exquisite design, lowering the ridges and, and listening to the board suggestions. I think it's going to be beautiful. Um, in addition, though, in compliance with our guidelines and in order to promote neighborhood harmony and appreciation, because once I think this gets matched up and the neighbors understand what it is and how it's going to look, then they won't be afraid. They'll appreciate it. And I think in order to do that, I think the story pulls are a good idea and possibly some kind of a model. People sometimes will build a model so that the neighbors can see, you know, the physicalness of it. And I think if you uh, are open to it, to look at our guidelines and look at the pages that we have all about how to have meetings with the neighbors and talk to them and share with them, if you're open to that, I think that that could be a way for people to be able to as I say, get together to understand and ideally appreciate what you're doing. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I have nothing new to add. <laughs> the, the one thing, part of the joy of being on a board like that is when you get to work with great architects and great designs, and it's painful sometimes when you don't have good architects, and th <laughs> this is beautiful, and you wowed me, and you wowed me with your sensitivity of listening and pulling back. And the way you brought down the ones, the two-story element to the side to create this view corridor, you have the elements here, and you convince the board. And we're trained enough that we can read paper mm -hmm. and we can sense it. Um, now you have to win over the neighbors, mm -hmm. and so now that's your job, that's your talent, your skill. Um, because if you don't, you will get appealed, and, and that's just nothing you want. Mm -hmm. And so. How you go about it, we can give you some tools and some suggestions and ideas, but really, um, if the neighborhood feels that this is not belonging in their neighborhood for their reasons, they do have a way of exercising their voice. And that's how you now need to change your approach and story polls and model, however you go about doing it in neighborhood meetings. Um, the concerns the board had initially on the size of the structure and the placement of it, it's coming together that it's going to, that we feel graphically it's going to belong it's going to be a good fit so um, commend you tremendously for your past two months worth of work or whatever it was mm -hmm. it's paid off um, but now I want to talk to the board about kind of the next step and really the question is for the secondary dwelling unit or not dwelling unit the secondary additional unit whatever it's called additional unit has no Resonance. bearing the additional unit in the back has no bearing on story poles. Mm -hmm. Yet, I somehow feel that this is one item that can get appealed at the staff hearing officer that's going to cause a whole bunch of headaches for people. So, in some respects, I kind of want you to come back to our board with a discussion about the story poles and all of the massing and everything so that this is also brought into the same discussion and maybe from that it'll temper down some of the neighborhood concern. And, and they have valid concerns because they're looking at it and uh, they love their neighborhood and they don't want it to see it change drastically. So, I love the neighborhood too. well, wonderful. <laughs> it's a good neighborhood. Uh, do you have anything else to add? And I've got a couple questions for the board. Yeah. Perhaps just, just procedural. Um, and, and that is that whether the next step would be the story poles or a model or, or to go to. Um, the, uh, the staff, staff, hearing. staff hearing. I would say procedure-wise, you don't need the story polls to go to the staff hearing officer. Mm -hmm. I would recommend the story polls and one more view in front of us because it'll only enhance your position when you go to the staff hearing officer to talk about this element. Even though this is one story, it has nothing to do about the overall height, the discussions of the main house are going to dwarf the conversation about the additional residential units. And the question I wanted to ask the board members is one person made reference to a speaker about wanting to know about the balcony location. And I wanted to talk about it to sense, here's the property line. Let's take a look at where this is. Is this too big of a request? Because normally we're concerned with story poles on the overall massing. We don't think about people in their backyard being able to see someone else on their second story balcony. So 
I wanted to know how other people felt on the board that that they don't need to go into the expense unless you really want to of this second story balcony off the master bedroom. If we would like to see it because we have a concern, then we can ask that of the applicant. I think that balcony uh, on the west side. It actually would be the south side. Well, there's one on the south side too. Oh, upstairs. And the other balcony is, is based with the architecture. Right? It's only like which one? This one. It's just a rail. It's sort of the elevation it's, real fast. Yeah, it's a uh, wrought iron. There's one here. Cantilevered wrought iron different. railing. These are very small. Right. Mm -hmm. Very shallow. Eighteen you know, inches yeah. deep, maybe. Yeah. And then the main one's right here. Looking um, east. Actually, it's just that little little bit, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. which is primarily oriented mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. the oaks. Mm -hmm. And it has these. So now, I think the locations are, are good. Okay, I'm going to go back to the site plan real fast. Um, this works. So there was the window here and then that kind of wraparound thing at this corner. Okay, ground level. No, I'm talking at the second the floor. The loggia on the second floor. The loggia mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. the master mm -hmm. bathroom, the master bedroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Discussions from that? Mr. I was on site today before I came to the meeting, and I looked at the, the position of the neighbor below and people from the back as well, and I don't see this as an issue at all, quite frankly. Uh, they are protected. They are off to the left if you're looking toward the ocean view, or to the right, excuse me, and they've planted a row of olive trees that's going to protect them completely from anything that they do up here. They're just not visible hardly at all from, um, from the, this site where this house is going to sit, especially the second story. Okay. It's a view from the master, if that helps. Yeah, but that was back at the old location. Now you're seven feet further For that. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> it's better. Um, question. This, if, if the board is going to require story poles, I'm assuming it's going to be a, a visited story pole by the, you know, situation by the board. It can be, yeah. Um, I mean, I would love to make sure I see the, the story poles as well, not not just the neighborhood, just so that we have a, a very clear understanding of, of what we're approving. Um, but I think most of the people on the board can visualize where the balcony would be on the corner of the building. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't, as long as that corner is defined somehow, okay. um, not just the ridge, but we should do an eave line and a ridge, I would think, as to the, the planes of the roof. Of the second story roof elements. Yes. So I, I don't think it's ne necessary to actually, you know, story pole the perimeter of the deck, but as long as the building uh, corner is located, I think we could visualize where the, where the deck would be. Mr. Chair, there are, there are actually three levels of story poles that this board has adopted, and I think what Mr. Dysler is suggesting is a standard level where specific selected building forms are selected uh, to demonstrate heights. Versus the full eight yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Uh, one thing about the board, um, at times we have gone and visited story polls on our own. You put it up and it's usually on a Friday, mm -hmm. and then it's up for the weekend, and then the meeting is the following Monday, so it's mm -hmm. up for the weekend. Um, and then we visit it on our own. We also have a choice for sometimes we meet at 1 o'clock at the jobs at the site or whether it's two o'clock we do a group meeting um, does anyone have a discussion what they prefer one way or the other I'm s okay I'd like us to be able to go on our own and leave them up not just Saturday and Sunday but you know a couple of days so that we okay. can make sure we get there and then I'd also like to make sure that however we um, suggest the story polls that it shows different if maybe photographs if you don't want to do the model but we want to see what it's going to look like from up above looking how tall it's going to be and how wide it's going to be so whatever you can do to help us so that we can see that bulk and the height we I would like to do that I'd like to drive around to the different nearby streets and I'm sure your office has done story polls yeah familiar we with know that how to do it it yeah yeah, comment. I just have a question. Um, I thought that um, the board would be able to decide whether or not the architecture was appropriate, mass, bulk, and scale wise, based on our information, and that you would, um, with positive comments, push us ahead to the staff hearing officer 
because we still have this PSP thing to get approved as well. And this is the question. And then we thought, well, then if we get that far with it, then we'd be happy to spend the money to put the story poles up because it is an expense, and she could see them too. And I'm just wondering if, if that's if that's how it goes, or are we? You know, okay. saying I thought that was the way. Let me have a question comment with staff in mm -hmm. the sense that um, part of what we're reviewing here is the overall size, bulk, mass, and scale of the structure, and we really have the two buildings and the way that they were able to divide it up into two FARs. Um, the secondary building, whatever it's called, um, has no. If, if that wasn't approved, does that thing just completely get wiped off the off the drawings? That could certainly be the result of a, a denial that the applicant would choose not to go forward with that additional dwelling unit. Okay. So th there are our two options here. I think the applicant is requesting to move the project forward with your comments and put up the story polls. That could be a requirement for the staff hearing officer also to ask that they be put up. But going back to the staff hearing officer, why would they be concerned about the ridge line of the, of the main they, residence? They probably would not be. But there, there should be comments about both structures, both homes, if you okay. move this forward about what you think of both structures. I'll, I'll tell you, we can give you, from my perspective mm -hmm. as, a, as one person, we can give you positive comments about the overall building, but you have to realize that other issues will come up at the staff hearing officer level. Mm -hmm. And that's just what you'll have to deal with at that point. Mm -hmm. But if you had, if the overall building, but you don't have to have story poles in order for you to get onto this to talk about whether or not you can build this as a secondary dwelling unit. That's good, mm -hmm. Mr. And Chair. If I interrupt again, the, the also the, the there is the possibility that the, we have a hearing at the staff hearing officer, and the decision on the additional dwelling unit is resolved. And, and if for some reason there's an appeal on it, we could actually have the project return back to the board and have the board weigh in on on it and both decisions get appealed at one time. We, what we don't want is the staff hearing officer decision appealed and then the, the Sigma Family Design Board appealed also from the architecture. We don't want that situation to happen. So right. there is a possibility for it to return back for more comments after the hearing officer decision. Okay. Does the board have any comment about how they would like to see this project move forward? I mean, I kind of expressed my opinion, but just jump in. Sure, I think, I think Mr. Shields made a good point that it is expensive to do story polls and that it makes sense for them to go through the process um, in a particular order and then come back with story polls. Okay. So first to the staff hearing officer. Yeah, and then I'll go back to the board. Quick. Would building a model be an option to doing story, story polls? Because we'd love to do a model. Doing both is kind of I have cost my prohibitive. Answer, but I want to ask other yeah. people first. <laughs> Anyway, well, I mean, models are great, too, so. That would be really fine for we on the board who know how to look at models and plans, but it's still not going to probably help the general public you know, to be able to visualize the heights mm -hmm. and, and And I would say, no, you got to do the story polls because the people up ahead are worried that they're going to lose their million-dollar view. Mm -hmm. Once you do the story polls, you prove to them that my million-dollar view is still intact. That issue and that concern goes away. What a portion of the view is still intact. Is the focus then on the second story element? For the story polls, we'll, that's another discussion we'll get to briefly. If we're deciding to go that, we'll kind of tell you what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be the second story, and I would suggest a little bit of the one story here leading up to the two okay. story. There's no need to do this. It's a one story structure. Mm -hmm. And then Glenn was asking for this corner here because it pertains to another neighbor. So, mm -hmm. you know. Makes sense. We'll, we'll, would we even have to put up story polls for the one story um, wing? What are you saying? You oh. Probably I'm a, not. I, you don't have to, but I would encourage it because I happen to stand at that person's front door and I turned around and I looked the mm -hmm. other direction. So I kind of know, but not everyone else has done that. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see when you do this little element that, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. it's all there. <laughs> or, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. And that's all you're proving, and I'm sure it's going to be a lot of money, but that mm -hmm. makes that comment go away. Mm -hmm. or that concern. Other people? Mr. Chair. Um, differ with Denise a little bit here. I just I just think you bring build a really strong case if you put up story polls and you just put all these issues to rest. Mm -hmm. And well, I, mean, I, 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 yeah, I wasn't against the story polls. So well, you were saying, saying it wasn't a necessity to move forward to the staff hearing officer. Uh, Before that, I mean I would I would 
I would have a tendency to do it before going to the staff hearing officer, but that's just my own personal. It's my personal thing to do the story polls too, even though it has no bearing on the staff hearing officer, because I think you need to lessen the neighborhood opposition, and the story polls will lessen that for you, or it'll raise it up and then it'll come up to our attention. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you don't do something here, the concern will will cloud the decision of your residential unit, additional residential unit. So how about we frame a motion and we just let it be the applicant's choice to go either to the staff hearing officer or to return back to the board with story polls. Some of So I should say okay. we're not making, yeah, just, yeah, we're not giving it any preliminary motion. It's just a, a regular yeah. motion. It's the motion that the uh, applicants may have a choice, what you just said, <laughs> <laughs> or the, uh, to, they can either uh, choose to come back to the full board with story polls, come back to the full board with story polls, or they can go to directly to the staff hearing officer. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to put your mic closer, or however it was not on. Um, you want to add anything else about the design? For yes, the I want to compliment to the, uh, the applicant and the architect for the uh, reduction of square footage. I think the uh, compatibility and size, scope, and scale of the house blends well with the neighborhood, and the quality of the architecture is very good. Thank you. Is there someone who wants to second that motion? I'll second that motion. Second by Denise, under discussion. You had your finger up? Oh, I was just going to say, um, it is nice when you do say positive things about us. So it's not always the, especially if it's moving forward to anything. And I would say that one thing that I felt strongly about, and it's it's a little bit, it's an architectural thing, really, is is us connecting the two, the two with the garages, which actually is, enhances the architecture, I feel, enables enables us to do this portal and make sense out of it, which is a nice termination to Green Ridge Lane. So... I would appreciate some sort of comment because the staff hearing officer isn't architecturally minded that that is an architectural issue that you guys understand and are okay with. That's what I would appreciate. Do you want to add anything else? Well, I highly recommend that uh, it's, I, yeah, I'd say that the quality and the style of the architecture is very well integrated with the lot and that the uh, little alcove archway entry to the carport is very well done and harkens back to a quality of architecture or architecture that actually reminds me of the courthouse. Mm -hmm. So I think Only that's big. And it's and it's and it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's very fun. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I think the question was you wouldn't want to see the garage be relocated yeah. to the smaller structure. Um, have other people jump in first if someone has a comment. Me personally, I'm reviewing this project as all one mass, and I'm not in my mind playing some game, you know, that this square footage goes here and this mm -hmm. square footage here, and that's why this is 99.99, and this one is. I'm not looking. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it as one entire complex, mm -hmm. and it works now because it's not on steroids. Mm -hmm. um, it's as simple as that. You've got you know two two story elements, but you, you've you. A lot of fun uh, one-story elements that are wrapping around here that make it a pleasant and it makes mm -hmm. it joyful to look at. Mm -hmm. And if you look at these aerial photographs, you'll see that there's some other very large homes. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to fit. It's going to fit the neighborhood. The story poles are just going to show that it's not going to look like a monstrosity on the hillside, mm -hmm. which is what our job is. May I say something else about the portal? Um, when, uh, upon visiting today, it was a little hard to find where I was supposed to go, so I think that this is really going to eliminate that problem, number one, because you know, the neighbor's secondary gate from Arbolado was right there, and I was wandering around going, where am I supposed to go? Where is this place? <laughs> so for me, this really makes a statement and says, here I am. This is the way in. Mm -hmm. I support it. Okay. Let's wrap Thank it up. You. Anything else? Um, it, it, that would be an indefinite continuance. The ball's in your court. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> you have a vote? Yeah, going to call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah. And as for story polls, I would um, you're on your own. They're picking them out, okay. figuring it out, okay. unless you want. You realize that the story polls are going to be on top of the existing house. That We've never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> 
Why don't you guys keep this aerial for yourself? And if this is the office set. I'll take that back. Yeah. That's got my notes on it. This is yeah, I know. Actually, can we have the extra set that you guys don't use? Um, they're, yeah, they're floating around here. He wanted the extra set. Yeah, then thanks very much. Yeah, really you know what? I'm so, Mark, Mark, yeah. let, let us keep that just because that's what the TV camera yeah, saw. Sure. I know it had your notes on it. But... As long as we get a couple other comments back. Okay. Um, let me give them to Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you for being patient. Sure. So. <laughs> no, okay. So we're only half, 30, 35 minutes behind, and I said 30. So we're going to start with item two. He's just getting some coffee. 1724 Sunset Avenue. We've seen this project two weeks ago, and we'll read through the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, comments where the board appreciates the project's overall design for a design that is compatible with the neighborhood. Number two, study the design in relation to the roof pitch and window and whether a zoning modification will be required. Number three, study the chimney to increase the height in relation to the ridge. And number four, study providing additional privacy screening at the deck. Okay. I have your name for the record, and you're up. Dan Weber. Alelia Parento, applicant. Okay. I'm All right. glad I didn't have your name on a speaker slip. <laughs> I didn't have to say. I'll uh, skip through all the photos and things that you've We're familiar with the project, you betcha. Time. How did you change? Okay, so uh, the staff was nice enough to spend some time with us um, to make sure we uh, were able to get a solution for this east facade that would avoid a uh, modification. So we did do a redesign there. Um, the first floor, this is the wall that's in, at the five foot setback, uh, which is what the setback used to be when the lot was originally laid out. And the second floor, uh, we've, simple, we've simply stepped our second floor wall back in one foot. So it's now at the current six foot setback. Um, so it's pretty simple. This, this gable, which faces the street, is now going to have a little piece of roof that just wraps along and covers that one foot jog. So if we were to look at that from the side, I'll just skip right to that page so that you guys can see what that looks like. It looks like that. So it's just a continuation of that gable and, and the wall jogs uh, one foot. We did. We went through all the options and uh, and looked at it with the staff and Jake Jacobus even was nice enough to volunteer some time to us. So I, I hope this is a good. I feel like it's a handsome enough solution. I feel like it'll work good and still satisfy. Can I see the previous minutes? Satisfy the um, goals of the project in terms of maintaining the light in the bedroom and the square footage that we're after. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we wanted to address and was kind of integral to the solution was uh, this concern about the deck and its proximity to the. Uh, the deck and its proximity to the property line here is as regards to the privacy of the neighbor next door. And Alelia did get a letter from the neighbor um, stating his support for the project, shared the plans uh, with the neighbor, and um, we're okay with it from our side. The neighbor's fine with it from his side. But nonetheless, we did want to go a little bit further to address that concern. So we are proposing some new landscaping. Uh, we consulted a landscape architect to help us pick out a species of, uh, for a couple trees that would uh, provide some privacy, get the appropriate height, but not get a canopy that was big enough that goes over into the neighbor's yard. Okay. Um, and if you see this dashed line, that's the extent of the previous uh, deck design. As we as we adjusted this elevation, I, we felt it made sense to move the deck in a little bit, both for to maintain the architecture and to bring the deck a couple feet further away from the property line. Um, so if I look at that elevation to show you what that looks like, I thought it was important to just maintain a certain thickness of roof so that this deck um, maintained its quality as a punch out in the roof and that didn't get too thin. So we did pull that away 
added some new landscaping for privacy. Uh, you also see that we're, we've uh, increased the height of the rail to 42 inches, which was previously in the last set of plans it was shown at 36 inches. So um, w we did study um, taking a look at this as a metal rail, uh, but we decided to keep it as a wood rail because it has a little bit of increased mass and bulk and it will help with that privacy when viewed from at an angle. Um, Additionally, we did some studies um, with some screens and things that vines could grow up, but after looking at a bunch of examples of English cottages, we felt those were out of character with this style of house. Um, and we really wanted to maintain the traditional style, so uh, we decided not to add an um, overhead or sideways shielding thing, but rather than rather do that with the building itself and with some proposed landscaping as well as moving away. And I think that's... That's the extent of the changes. Is there, is there anything else that you want to add? Oh, the oh, the chimney. Um, yeah, we do want to maintain the chimney, and so we appreciate you pointing out the uh, the concerns. So we did go down to the building department, research what would be done in our structural engineers, doing an analysis on that to figure out what, if anything, needs to be done to increase the height of the chimney. And you're paying the structural engineer for this analysis? Well, he's doing our structural engineering <laughs> and everything, so yeah, he's gonna. <laughs> he's a good value, though. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, I hope you oh, don't pay too much I just, thought of, one, I just yeah. thought of one other thing. Uh, one of the board members did suggest that we remove one set of doors. And I did, I did take a look at that, but so when I scooted the deck over, rather than remove a set of doors, I kept the same number but just reduced their width so that when all these open, the deck's already small and we don't want the doors to take up half the deck when they swing open. So kept the same number of doors but reduced their width. They and try to keep this is it four foot or five foot open. It's about four. Okay. Well, good presentation. So, if you're done, I'll open up public comment. Seeing nobody raised to their seat, do we have any letters of concern? Oh, yes, Mr. Chair. We have a letter of concern from Ms. Paula Westbury, and then also a letter of support from the neighbor James. Shoemaker at uh, 1728 Sunset Avenue. That's the neighbor to the east. Thank you very much. All right, I'll bring it back to the board for questions of the applicant. Uh, what type of tree are you proposing on the side yard there? We're proposing a sweet shade tree, and I think the, I can't remember the Latin name, but it's something like Hymnos. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, um, yes. Uh, will you be keeping all the new colors and everything to match the old? Yeah. Okay. We'll be doing everything. All the de all the exterior eaves, rake detailing will match the existing paint colors. The new doors and windows will paint to match the existing mm -hmm. uh, doors and windows. Great. Anybody else? No one. No other questions. Let's move on to comments. Mr. Um, Zimmerman. Um, I would recommend giving them a uh, preliminary approval. Good. And uh, you should go back to the <laughs> consent. Told you you make up time. <laughs> for final. Okay. Yeah. He's on, but this one wasn't on your lapel this time. But we're getting there. Uh, he turned it on before he spoke. Hey, that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Um, save that thought. I'll call on you next. Any other comments from people? Um, I actually have a comment. <laughs> I'll let everyone goes else go first. Okay, I, I really compliment you. I think you did a really good job. And uh, I actually think that little setback on the second floor is kind of goofy, but I understand why you did it, and I think you managed it very well. So I, it's one of those OLs. I, yeah. I, I yeah. agree with Jim that uh, I recommend we go forward. Everything is wonderful, what you did. The one comment I would say is, is study going going less than a forefoot on the door. I just, I'm just i only questioning it because I think you're going to lose too much of your glass area due to the uh, styles that make up the sides of the door. And um, structurally, it's all one opening, whether you divide it into four to three based upon the door sizes that you choose. You might only use one on an everyday basis, and the other ones are just doors with furniture parked in front of it. But I think you might be losing too much of your window area. So when you start shopping for windows, take a look at the side rails. And there's, they call them the French door. And then there's more of the modern style that has a narrower um, sides. Yeah. That's just something for you to study. And it's, uh, but it's ready for preliminary. It's ready. Okay. Do 
Did you have anything? The, the only comment I would have is, again, with the chimney is, oh, yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? No, if, if that chimney can be extended up, it's a, probably a masonry chimney right now. Mm -hmm. So structurally, that's just an issue you might have to... And what year was the house built in? I don't know. 1935. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to sign your name as a licensed architect on that? No, no. I'm just wondering what kind of what kind of cap it's going to have at the top because it, it's probably not going to be a masonry chimney when it's done. Yeah. Right. Well, we've talked about several solutions. I mean, in any solution, we want it to look just like this. Technically, how we achieve that, we've got a few options. I mean, we may... We talked about either leaving the masonry in place and extending wood framing on top and doing a detail behind the stucco where we put a metal cap that goes up to a new flue only from this point up. Uh, That's the option A. Oops, yes. Uh, option B is we actually extend the uh, masonry and we tie in to the new framing to, um, to stabilize it and add some new straps and potentially, if it's necessary, underpin the footing. So those are our options right now. I'm not sure what way it's going to go. And when you do the working drawings, you'll figure it out. Yeah, exa exactly. That was our point. I mean, we want to maintain the chimney as a usable chimney, so I think extending it up is... Well, the other idea is, like, you've seen typical engineered uh, fireplaces where the top of the flue is where it stops as yeah. masonry, and then they do metal bestus, Yeah, and mm -hmm. that might be a... Yeah. That might be an option, considering it's not that great of a distance. Yeah. So, Mr. Zimmerman, do you remember what you thought earlier? <laughs> Well, I'd like to make a motion to give it uh, preliminary approval and to um, go to consent for final approval. Okay. Is there someone who would like to second that? I'll second that. Second by Mr. Miller. Additional comments would be to provide a color board and details about the um, chimney for the fireplace. Then you got to, he's got to the oh, and the MPO findings. Let me find that one sheet for you. Um, Mr. Jim, uh, Jim uh, you can go over that list Bernie's given you real fast. The, uh, the uh, mass Balkan scale is uh, acceptable. And the, um, the quality of architecture and materials matching the existing house, I think, is acceptable. And the additional landscaping? There's a comment the, about The uh, shade trees um, will not uh, impact, significantly impact the um, adjacent properties. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other discussion for this motion? Mr. Chair, I just have one question for you. Um, uh, is it necessary for someone to supply a color board when they're matching existing? It is. Okay. Just checking. It's just for the record, so it's part of the archive files 20 years from now when someone paints it pink. <laughs> All right. With that, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, and I will announce a 10-day appeal period for your project. Thank you very much. Beautiful project. You return to consent. So that's in two weeks. Um, I've made it indefinite, so I would suggest doing your uh, half your working drawings or at least resolve the fireplace because okay. you don't want to get fire. I mean, our final, and then come back to say, oh, we couldn't do it after all. Right. Okay. Oh, Dan, let me give you this form. We're on to item three. We apologize for being late. It is 4119 San Martin Way. Good luck. Project before. I have your name for the record, then we'll read the previous minutes and we'll start the presentation. 
Uh, this is Dana Longo, applicant. Rain Longo, applicant. Okay. We have the minutes. Mr. Chair, these are the comments from the previous board meeting. The modification poses no negative aesthetic impact to the neighborhood. Provide additional details and accurate 3D modeling. Number three, provide a more developed landscape plan. Number four, provide a color board. Number five, study the San Martin Way elevation as it relates to the freestanding screen in the front yard setback. Number six, provide photographs of the surrounding neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> Don't you love that? <laughs> yes, yeah. I think they're with the mod file. The additional photographs of the neighborhood are, is with the mod file, she said. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. So, um, why don't you start with your modification and tell us what happened. Well, uh, it was kind of a long process. Got through it. Um, the initial request was to allow our open space to be in the secondary front yard. We had initially re indicated San Martin as our primary front yard and Verano as our secondary front yard. Um, that was denied and it was said that Verano is our primary front yard. So um, we went and redesignated Verano as our primary front yard and put our open space over here in the secondary front yard. And uh, that was denied. And uh, we put it back in the primary front yard and then it was approved. So. With some changes, um, and one you can see on the revised, we can look at this one for now. Um, the screening has been removed. We can't have all the screening in the, now that it's open yard and the, the front porch area no longer is covered. It just has an architectural beam. Can you show us an elevation of what that looks like? Should be. Sorry. I'll let you do that. I think I bend over that far. Okay. Keep going. This is the okay. Verano elevation. Mm -hmm. This screen is going to be there or that is not? That screen is going to stay. That yeah. screen will remain. The rest of it will not. What's the rest of it? Well, the rest of it that we showed at the last meeting was is not going to stay. So what we're looking at is, is how it's going it's to be. How yeah. it's going to be represented. And so this was that architectural beam that you made reference mm -hmm. to? That's correct. And then this is the revised elevation from San Martin Way. That's and correct. you deleted the screen that was here? That's from correct. The previous. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think actually... Can you pass those? If you have yeah, extra copies for people yeah, to look I at. Okay. These are our colors. Sure. Why don't you pass this around too if you'd like. Okay. Do you have revised 3D uh, um, images in this set? Or is this... That's the 3D image that was... Res it was just... Okay. Is revised. that the same one as that? Yeah. Let's put yeah. that right here in the center and the TV camera guy will zoom in on it. Okay. Why don't you talk to us about your colors? Well, we wanted to have colors that weren't too strong, didn't stand out too much in the neighborhood. Um, we wanted to use grayish blues. Um, we thought about using tan or brown or orange and kind of... Umber or okay. sienna or yeah. those colors. Um, but we, our palette that we prefer is kind of... We, we're keeping most of the body of the house in a light gray and then having some dark gray features. We just have this one piece that we wanted to do with the blue, which is kind of hidden by the woodwork. And the wood, this wasn't a good representation of the wood stain, so we're probably going to go with a darker wood stain yeah. that's so closer this to this. So color too, is it really this symphony blue? Yeah, yeah. The, this printout didn't really give a true demonstration of what the colors are going to look like. These on the on this side of the sheet here, this is a uh, the actual, the actual paint chips. That yeah, that we're 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 wanting. That we couldn't get it to represent That's those fine. colors, so we picked the colors that were the closest to what we wanted. 
our thought with the door being turquoise like that was to have something that kind of stood out and was inviting. Um, okay. But that being said, landscaping is probably going to be shielding it from most of the neighborhood, seeing it. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't see the landscaping in this rendition. Well, let's um, talk about the landscaping. And, um, um, okay, I, I so here we so that's okay. okay. I was waiting. So what we have is we're going to have con very little concrete as far as big chunks of spots. We have a little pad in the back for maybe dining. We have the, the driveway, and then that's really the bulk of the concrete. These are pavers that we would like to set. This is all decomposed granite. This is all decomposed granite with vegetable beds that are slightly raised. And then we have a drought-tolerant lawn, which we're looking at putting buffalo grass in, which eventually would need, hopefully, no irrigation or very minimal irrigation. And then we have kind of uh, succulents and I think it was Senecio right there. So we're okay. trying to keep it so that we're not using a lot of water but we're creating an inviting environment where we have people that can... Okay. Perfect. That's what I was looking for. Right. So we have some ornamental, you know, we have a, a tea tree, a leptospermum over there, and we have a Japanese maple over on this side. And then in the back area, we're keeping it relatively simple with a lawn for our children that will need some grass. And we're planning on putting fruit trees in the backyard. And this butts up against a garage. How about this bamboo over here? And then we have a bamboo screening on this side. With root we, barriers. Yes, with rhizome root barriers. Great. Well, um, anything else for your presentation? Uh, I actually just want to mention one thing. We are proposing to put some street trees. There's nothing in this area at this point. And so I'd like to put in some non-fruiting olives in the front. We'll have a comment for you uh, okay. later on that. Okay. I noticed that the neighborhoods surrounding are all olive trees okay. for the street tree. So I was going to try to put a non-fruiting version of that. And then on this side, it's mostly palm trees, but... I was thinking of putting in some Hong Kong orchid trees in that space. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I will open up the public comments. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this project? Seeing. No oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what we'll have you do is speak first, and then we'll have you fill out a little speaker slip later. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. And state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Ron Halenka, and um, actually I am <laughs> the one that owns the property. Um, it's in a, a trust right now, but what I really wanted to say was that <laughs> this property has been sitting, as you could tell, it's a corner lot, and it's been sitting there for many years. My father owned it and bought it a long time ago, and it's actually the gateway into for all the residential areas the rest of the homes are in. And I know for a fact that there's been a lot of um, people who are really sore, a sore eye of seeing a vacant lot there. And they're going to be quite happy once they finally get a house built in that area so that they actually can come in and actually feel comfortable in their neighborhood that, you know, something's being built there. and. Actually, that's the last vacant lot in that whole area that has not been done. Nothing been done to it. Great. So that was my comment. <laughs> Thank you very much. And staff will have you fill out a form. Yes. Any other speakers? Seeing nobody in the audience, that is. Um, staff, are there any letters? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We do have a letter of concern from Ms. Paula Westbury. Thank you, Paula. With that, I will close public comment and return it back to the board for questions of the applicant. I am. Mr. Miller. So you have brought no photos of the adjacent. Oh, I'm sorry. Part. Yeah, we do have some. 
Oh, you've got him over there. I passed him this way. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Why don't you go first while he reviews yes, those photos? Just, I was wondering if the height at your tallest point was about the same height as the two-story building to the left. I have no idea I, exactly yeah, I, how tall that apartment building is. I For some reason, that. I have the idea that it's shorter, but I can't put my finger on anything as to why I think that. So I, I just don't know how tall that building is. Questions for the for the applicant, Mr. Chair. It has to do with the color board. There was a, a plum color or some sort of. It's. Are these two supposed to represent the? It, it's it, it's I, this color is supposed to be the same as that color, and it's supposed to represent the wood and the the framing around the windows. So, so but this is the this darker is the color. color. Yes, of, these are the, the actual colors because they're the color chips. These were computer printed out. That got that tweet. Yeah, it didn't this work. Is, this is applying to the garage door, the windows mm -hmm. doors. Yes. yes. Okay. on your lapel. Maybe, maybe not. No, it's from okay. Okay. But you did turn it on. That was yeah, it. <laughs> the question about the sizes of windows is not really there's not a well, the, the sizes of the glass area is more of a judgment on our behalf. It's an aesthetic thing. There isn't this guidelines that we that we follow that says you can't have a window greater than 9 or 10 square feet. So it's for us to evaluate on a case by case basis. Um, Mr. Chair, I had a question um, about that glass area. It shows a shadow line. Is that is that window recessed, or is it flush with the front? It's supposed to be flush. I don't know why he. It's all the, flush. Yeah, it's flush. They're vinyl. They're not recessed into the board. I'm not quite sure why the architect decided to put that. It's a really nice view of the mountains that's to the north and the east of the yeah. lot. That's why we have And there's there. actually no living space in this area. It's stairs. That's actually so. a question. Is there any other question? I'm trying to understand this, how this part is going to appear from the street if it's going to be, if there's any way it can be softened or if it's just going to be this tall thing or if there's landscaping in front of it, maybe that will help. We do have planting proposed for the trellis area to soften the, the hard edges of the, the porch area. But as far as the tower sticking out, in other words, I, I think we're going to have some wisteria coming up along through these uh, posts, if you will, and then through the uh, through this trellis. And uh, you know, we plan to have some plantings over the garage and um, maybe some vines through here for sure. And, and just to kind of clarify, where that window is actually partially looking at the 154, um, there's no one that's actually looking into that window, nor is looking at anybody else's lots. Yeah. And there's, it's a stairwell, and that's actually the part of the stairwell where you transition. So the windows are kind of set above that. <laughs> I have a generic question. Perhaps you know the answer. Will you have a metal flue that's round, or are you going to be a rectangle going all the way up to the top? Uh, it's a metal flue that's surrounded by cement board siding. The metal flue is round. So it's actually going to be concealed like this? That's yes. correct. 
and then this elevation. This is this incorrect. elevation doesn't. That's incorrect. That's. So I want the other. This is incorrect. That is incorrect. Yes. Okay. Questions from other people, and then we can go into um, just the comments. Oops, yes. sorry. That photograph right there. Um, there seems to be uh, like a, a skirting along this front porch area that appears here. Or is that a is that a wall? I think there's a couple of steps that go up from ground level onto a deck here. I, I, yeah, I it's the it's underneath underneath the, house. the deck. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the, the the issue is going to be the how many steps is it going to be, and whether it's going to be three steps or four steps or however. The, how it's drawn on plan is how it's going to be. Which I think is two steps. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chair, was there minutes on this from the last time? Right, let's move on to comments. Uh, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. I have a comment on the windows. Um, it's a very contemporary design, and uh, there's very little detail. And I would like to see, you know, an upgrade on the windows. And vinyl windows uh, at least bring a sample in that we could that we can see. Mm -hmm. I know the... the let, us, let us talk oh, for a while. Uh, vinyl windows, usually, it, you know, the, the frames are very thin mm -hmm. and you don't get any detail. Um, so I'd like to see a sample of, the, um, of that type of window that you plan on using. How would we bring in a... I'm sorry. Let us go through our comments and then we can address that a little later. Okay. Uh, uh, I have... Um, the reason I reviewed the minutes and looked at the adjacent properties, um, this is kind of a cutting edge home, and I'm having a difficult time now seeing if it really is, is compatible with the neighborhood, because mm -hmm. um, it's too cutting edge. <laughs> um, I know that's, uh, so I'm trying to think, there ha it has to have some more of traditional elements to it, I think, to become compatible to the neighborhood. And I hate to say that, but I really feel that, in my opinion, it's, it's it doesn't really blend in with the neighborhood. Okay. Mr. Bort, or Mr. Chair, if I just may jump in. Just as a point of clarification, I'd like to add that given that this existing neighborhood is a 1950s, 1960s, very basic track neighborhood, that that should be considered as well. I mean, generally, if a neighborhood was a historic nature or some uh, relevant architectural style that we would ask you to consider that more greatly. But um, obviously that this is a transition neighborhood to existing I'll, 50s, I'll, 60s. I'll interject in saying that more traditional building materials could be blending with the 1960s neighborhood. It doesn't have to blend with the 1930s Spanish stuff, right. but this is 2010 modern urban architecture inserting itself in a 1960s ranch neighborhood. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm just being observant. So, uh, comments? Well, I, I personally find that to be uh, to its advantage. I, 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 I disagree that we should ever try to replicate the 60s tract home <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. And to see something fresh and exciting like this is, I think, is a, is a good thing. Uh, modern is good. It, it's, it's not, and especially in, you know, since the 60s tract home was the most modern that they had at the time, right? So uh, it was <laughs> modular in its way. It was. It was very modular. They they had they had plans that they reversed back and forth, and they were all the same. You know, that's where that little song came from about the ticky tacky. You know. <laughs> so for me, this is lovely to have something that does not conform to that. <laughs> I'm going to compliment the board on its creative language. <laughs> yes, Mr. Bart Simpson House. <laughs> that was a different project. We use creative lang language around here. <laughs> Comments from other people. Yeah, we're just going. Mr. Chair, I have a comment. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think the project is kind of a good transition. It's actually using very traditional wood siding in its in its um, skin. Uh, I think the porch is also a very traditional element, but I, I think I think it's time to not, like Denise said, replicate the the neighborhood that's there. And I think the massing is is, is something that is uh, in scale with the neighborhood, and I think the materials are in scale as well. So I, I would give it some positive feedback, positive comments. Okay. Mr. Chair. Bernie? Thank you. So our job here is to make sure that we, if we're going to introduce something this extreme into the neighborhood, to make sure that it follows the neighborhood preservation ordinance guidelines. And so, of course, on the one hand, brand new, modern. On the other hand, older, you know, ramp. So what can we do with this? And it seems to me one thing is it is big. It's bigger than 85%, so that's something, huh? Again, this is just okay, a guideline. Okay, it's a guideline, but let me just say my train of thought. So if we're concerned, we know that we have a good landscape design, which is going to help soften the view. And, and I am concerned about this really exotic blue color, because I think introducing this shape and this size and the color and the second story element with all that glass, I think it might be able to find a way to maybe tone it down a little bit to maybe make it a little bit smaller or maybe tone down some of the colors a little bit so that it's not quite so extreme. Well, as to colors, we're certainly open to any suggestions you might put okay. forth. Aaron, and then we'll um, go to Jim. As far as the architectural style, um, I was kind of wondering too. I knew the na neighborhood's kind of track home, and but looking at the site it's positioned on, um, it's there's nothing across the street. There's a large. I don't know. Are those apartments next door. Yeah, there's two apartment complexes adjacent to one another. Yeah. There's one immediately adjacent to our building. It, it's 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 kind of a mix bag. Um, so I think I'm okay with the uh, with the style. I do have some some landscape comments. I think it'd be easier just to come up here. What sheet do you want? The landscape plan. Um. I think the plant palette's nice. Uh, I don't have anything against the plants you've chosen. Um, I think this whole scheme is pretty. Um, it needs simplification. I think some of these plants are too big to put next to a sidewalk, and there's too many variety, too much variety for a contemporary project. I think these these triangles of veggie gardens and roses, they need to relate to the architecture. You've got vines that aren't even on columns here. Hey, this so got changed. I think the, yeah. <laughs> this needs to shrink. Um, I think the arborist, the city arborist, should approve all the street trees. Um, and is this area here planted area or is that paved? You know, is that, that's not sidewalk. It's, this should be planted, right? Yes, it should be. It's kind of an anomaly that it ended up with that curve because I think the actual legal description of our lot involves this curve, but there's no barrier there. There's just a, you know it's a vacant lot now with the sidewalk at a 90 degree angle, and um, it's. That being said, I don't know who owns this small triangle. <laughs> well, I, I think you treat it just like a parkway. You can landscape yeah. it that area just like you're landscaping that area. Yeah. In which case, we could, you know, run the landscaping out like that. The other thing to note, and you know, there is a little bit of a slope that goes up. It's not flush to the sidewalk as it's shown on the on the, the detail sheet right there. There's a little bit of a lip. So we were trying to, which will elevate, of course, the landscaping a little bit higher off of the sidewalk area. So most likely what I would put is kind of just Senecio going around the edge of that area. Okay, Jim, do you have anything? Okay. Um, 
I'll just jump in. I would say that when you landscape this area similar to this, you have to realize that this is public land and not private land. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you move some of this landscaping into here, don't move some of your private use kind of stuff in this zone. And really mm -hmm. say that this is a gift to the neighborhood as they're wrapping around the corner going to their duplex. Because mm -hmm. um, that's the way it was laid out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm struggling with the house. And I'm struggling with the architecture like I was before. Um, I'm not struggling with the modular home concept. I've said before I like it. And that's, that's cool. Um, I'm glad you're not doing the chimney flue. We are too. <laughs> okay. The, the window here, I have a concern, and it's only because I've done some second-story windows, and I drive by them five years later, and my goodness, I can see the ceiling of this person's house. It's the master bedroom, and they turn the light on, and they're there at 10 o'clock at night. I know this is your stairwell, um, but what we as designers don't realize until we make mistakes and we revisit them is that this becomes a big beacon or a light to the outside world. And so you might not sense that you're going to have a view but I'm just wondering if there's a way to diminish this the view of your mountains and a lot of this stuff. But I'm also looking at it at nighttime. It's just going to look just like a big, huge whiteness. So I, I have some concern with that. The second concern is that this element, which is on the corner, is actually taller than everything else. And the way I think is that instead of making this 18 inches taller, this should be 18 inches lower. And that if it's just a volume over the stairs, mm -hmm. there's no need to have what I would say an increased presence, unless you're kind of doing a beacon or it's a tower or it's something like that, but this is an architectural element to bring attention to it. It's got, and the things that I'm struggling, it's, you know, 15% of it's the modern architecture, but then the, the other rest of it is the proportions are funky and that I sense that this is too tall and too high in relationship to the lower story. And there's just an oddity that happens here. And, and that's just what my eye sees. Having this trellis here is important because it actually breaks up the two-story mass. If the city did not allow you to do this architectural beam, um, you would have a very, um, very aggressive, very strong presence. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, when I look at this elevation, I love corner windows, I love this kind of stuff. To me, this has to come down in size and, and prominence so that it it tapers down towards the corner instead of rising at the corner. Um, and I know this is all modular, but it seems like for, in this elevation, this is a lot taller. And maybe because this was grown, but over here it doesn't sense that. So I, there's something odd happening between here and here proportion-wise. I don't understand what you mean. Proportion-wise, the distance between the top of the garage door and the underside of the soffit appears to be, if this is a seven-foot door, this appears to be two and a half feet maybe. Uh, maybe three feet, this, the distance from this dot to this dot. Okay, and I look at here, and the distance from here to here is like 18 inches, if this is a seven-foot door. And this is 11 feet to the top, so maybe you grew the height of the door. Um, proportion, something's, that's just what I'm sensing. Well, this is the accurate one. This is probably just an accurate from the architect. Well, we? we always like mm -hmm. to look at everything, and then one thing that <coughs> architects are good at is picking out um, inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. Um, following up on Mr. Zimmerman, nice homes have recessed windows. We do two by six studs and then we do a two by four and we, and we put the vinyl window against the two by four and, and then it's pushed back a little bit more. It makes it more expensive. But if there was a way that you can create a little bit of an interest mm -hmm. at the window, to say that this is going to be a vinyl window which is basically flush with the plaster, it's just becoming a mobile home. Mm -hmm. And that's not what your quality of architecture <laughs> that you want. And it's important as some of these modern homes get built that they're done right and they set the example for everyone else to follow. So additional detailing would be necessary for final, but it also helps in persuading people when it's at the preliminary review. Um, but those are my comments. Denise. May I make another comment? I, I wanted to weigh in on the color. Board. Oh, yes, the blue. We didn't I, talk about I, that. I really like the blue. Those are earth tones. I mean, blue is an earth tone, really, because it, you know, it's the sky and the water, and it's a dark, dark it's a teal, really, um, except for the surround on the door. Um, and I find it to be very complimentary with the grays that they picked out. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's a very subtle palette. I don't see that as, as loud at all. And then I wanted to also point out 
where that window is pointing, if I might just show this picture. This is where it is pointing, the corner of that window, and I don't think that's going to interfere with anybody in particular. Okay. Uh, as for the colors, were you looking at this teal yes. color? Because these are the actual color chips. Okay. And so it's important to know that the dark blue is darker than this. It's kind of like a Copenhagen blue. Mm -hmm. And the teal here versus the teal here. My two cents is I prefer, I prefer these colors over these colors, that these are more muted. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. So this, the blue? This is very different than what. <laughs> so a teal would be, like, yeah. as it shows here, is a very complimentary. Color. So this is more in her eye as well as mine. Mm -hmm. Are there people's comments about colors, build, building materials? If not, let's have a motion, let's move forward. And then the question is, does the board feel that this project is ready for preliminary approval? And if it's not ready for preliminary, what does the board want the applicant to bring back to the board? If it's ready for preliminary, is it final on consent? Is it final um, at full board? Mr. Chair, I'll try a motion. Okay. I'd like to make a motion uh, for this project to return to the full board because the board understands the difficulty and the challenge to to make this just right and we really want to do our best to promote that for the neighborhood compatibility. So return to the full board with the following comments. Number one, study the proportions so that they relate to the lower story better. Number two, consider ways to reduce the size and prominence of the corner windows. Number three, study the top of the garage and its relationship to the soffit underside. Uh, number four, provide window detail on or and or alternative design to recess windows and minimize, minimize impact. Keeping in mind quality of architecture is what we're striving for. Finally, earth tones and muted colors are appreciated. Is there someone who wants to second that motion? I'll second it. Okay, Jim is the seconder. Any discussion? No discussion? Mr. Chair, that, that motion was just for a continuance. Can, in, indefinite continuance or a two-week continuance um, back to the full board with those comments, and then we'll you know, reevaluate it. So indefinite is fine for you? No, I want two-week. Is two-week continuance? Two-week yes. would be better. Yeah, okay. yeah we, we, we need to. We have an <laughs> issue. <laughs> oh, no, no. Um, and you guys are on, for, on your... Oh, yeah, furlough thing. For, yeah, for a long time and... That's going to come along really fast, so we need that doesn't to... go on furlough. Yeah, this one does not want to be on furlough, so... So, with the comment of a, um, a two-week continuance, if that's okay with the maker of the motion, double-check with your architect that he can have drawings, and if not, call staff, because then they'll just make it another two-week continuance. We'll have drawings. Okay. Does anybody have any comments about the fireplace? Now that it is not a round cylinder, I'm <laughs> fine with it. Yes. I feel the same way. You like the round cylinder? I'm sorry. <laughs> we didn't like the round cylinder. That was we didn't notice it on the plans until after we submitted it. So we had him alter this. So he needs to revise his plans anyway to show that revision to them. Okay. And as far as the windows, we already have the windows picked out, so that shouldn't be a problem. We're not using the cheap. We're using a solid one that's very nice. It's also energy efficient. Um, and if the architect has built this model before, he has construction details of what this looks like. Right. So that's what he needs to prove. We're, they're, we're they're asking. They're oh, they're not recessed? No. no they're easily they're done. Yeah. Okay, then, then, then. I think it was a cost prohibitive thing. But yeah. we'll, well, Santa Barbara wasn't built based upon yeah, it's not those types a middle of issues. Class. Judging from the previous hearings that took place today, I guess I'd have to agree with you on that. <laughs> yeah. So with that, we'll call for a vote. Move Mr. Chair, before Oops. you do that, can you incorporate any landscaping comments into that motion? Yeah. Did you want some? Do that corner, please. 
I can give them now, but I, I can restate it. Yeah, let's, let's add those to the motion um, so that we can hopefully get it approved for you. Uh, simplify the plantings along the sidewalk. Um, the veggie and rose garden triangles need to relate to the architecture. Arborist, city arborist to approve all street trees mm -hmm. and add the landscaping at the what corner is that? The corner northeast, northeast corner. Northeast, you're very good. Okay, so we're okay with the second one? Okay, yes. Um, if, so if they come back in two weeks and with their material board and their color board, everything, then we can. We can give the project preliminary approval and then final on consent. Um, okay. If we think everything is complete enough, we can give final at that meeting. Okay, so we would want to see the, what the wood looks like, a sample of some of the exterior material. The more they bring to us, the more the, you bring, the better. the better. Yeah, our architect's up in the Bay Area, so we'll see if we can get some samples fed X down or if we can get them from here. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll see what we can do. Okay. So as far as the wood, you want samples of the actual porch wood or what, is, what exactly? It, some people are more interested in the color, mm -hmm. um, and other people are interested if you, of the actual, what the material looks like. I personally am familiar with this stuff, so I'm not, I don't need to see it. Mm -hmm. Bernie would like to see what this cement board looks like. So you can get okay. a hardy board sample, even though it's going to be white primer. You say, this is the building material, and this is the color, and you go, oh, okay. And that... Um, and as far as the wood stain, you need us to actually go and find stain. Well, and they stain actually it. sell, you know, not sell. I mean, they have color samples okay. um, because, if, as you learn, this doesn't work, but this works just perfect. Right. And you only have to make one of the actual color swatches. Then this gets saved in your street file forever, mm -hmm. um, and it goes okay. for. So that's really what we're looking at is these colors, but this was more preferable because they were more muted. And then as far as the window sample, what do you want us to bring You don't in? need to do a window sample. Um, some window manufacturers actually have the samples that you right. can borrow and things. Um, really what we're concerned with is, I didn't study the detail so I didn't see, but having the plaster and the window on the same plane just right. looks like a cheap 1960s tract house like your next mm -hmm. door neighbor. If you can pull one forward or one back, okay. then you have a little bit of a shadow line, which is what Mr. Zimmerman was talking about. Is he, um, mm -hmm. So you can sort of say that the architect is good at doing, you know, drawings, but the drawings are fake mm -hmm. because there really isn't a shadow, and so it's it's leading us astray, thinking, oh, we're going to get a nice shadow line when we actually weren't. Right. Okay. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah okay. makes yeah. sense. Cool. So I'm sorry I'm being so harsh, but that's just oh, we that's all cheat a little. Yeah, I think you cheated on that one. All right. Anything else? Oh, the window colors. The window colors is important, and I assume it's, it's off not. that palette. Okay. You can get a sample. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you mean the color of the frame? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you going with a gray frame? Are you going to go with the brown? I think we're going to go with the brown. We're frame. trying to keep it with the brown tone. A so vinyl window only comes in three colors: white, tan, and like chocolate brown. Well, then that's the color that he's going with right there. Am I right? Chocolate brown. Maybe. I mean, so verify the color, get the real color, and put it on a chip so we can see. So okay. What's the make of the number? The Milligrand. Uh, Milgard. Milgard, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? All right. I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion. Aye. Really? Yeah. I'll join you. No, I'm, I'm no. just, I'm in support of the project as is. So that's why I'm opposed to the motion. That's why. Okay. Oh. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'll go with the, I'll go with the majority. So we have one against. So. <laughs> That's fine. We're all different opinions. That's perfect. It's the way it's supposed to work sometimes. So with that, we'll see you in two weeks. Okay. Thank you. That's next. Okay, now that stuff's all...
coming back to me. I'll take it. We're on, now on to the last item of the night. We apologize, we're 30 minutes late, but that happens. The item is 1220 Shoreline Drive. And if we have the minutes of the previous meeting and the presentation. This project was granted preliminary approval and final is requested. Mr. Chair, the comments from the previous meeting were to provide front wall elevations, provide lighting details for lighting at the front column. Number three, provide details on the new pedestrian entryway. And number four, address compliance with tier three slip requirements on the plans and provide details on impacts to the existing landscape due to new construction, including elements for compliance with stormwater management program. Can I have your name yeah, for the I'm, record? Uh, Jim Zimmerman, architect for the Kurzweil. Okay. And we've uh, we've eliminated the stone wall in the front. In the front. Uh, we decided to go with a uh, a picket fence, and that is on one of the sheets here. So the, the picket fence would run across here, here, and return here. This is kind of a detail of it. Um, and then with the roses and the planting, with the white picket fence, you know, I think would look good. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, we just have a, you know, a post post where we come through at the entrance, and um, then the the stone path which okay. is existing. Um, is there any lighting in this area? No lighting, no. Okay. They'd rather, in the evening, they'd rather look out and get, you know, when the lights come on, it kind of glares the view. Okay, good thinking. Front wall lighting, pedestrian entry. Yeah. Tier have, three. So the pedestrian entry would this just be is. the posts on both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, then the light, we have a detail here. So it's a shaded light, and uh, there would be one on each side of the uh, each side of the door on the side, and. Uh, that's basically it. Okay. And then how about the landscape plan, talking about the Tier 3 management, stormwater management stuff, or wherever you have that information? Yeah, we have um, the drainage. Uh, the drainage runs right through here and here. And then uh, we have the existing drains that mm -hmm. drain into here. And then uh, eventually, if it fills up, it just overflows. And we put uh, really nice pebbles on top of the, the drainage, uh, and it really looks it looks neat with the with the picket fence and the uh, the planting in front. Mm -hmm. It's just not gravel cover; it's uh, kind of a pebble cover. Neat. Anything else you want to bring to our attention? Mm -hmm. No. Well, the the color board will match existing, but initially what we used is uh, Olympic 901, and uh, it's weathered. You know, it's weathered out quite a bit now, so it's darker. But um, then the the trim is white, white, and then we just match the uh, the wood uh, shing not the wood shingles, but the S top. Comp shingles, yeah. We match what's on there. Okay. 
Thank you very much. So with that, I will open up public comment. Seeing nobody, I will close public comment. And someone left their jacket or their book bag. Uh -oh. Okay, is there a letter from Paula? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. We do have a letter of concern from Ms. Paula Westbury. Thank you. So with that, I'll return that back to the board for questions of the applicant. Mr. Chair, two questions. On the color board, the, your garage door is what color? The garage, do you have a... She stepped out to deal with the book bag. The garage door won't change. You know, so it's an existing... That's existing, that will stay. Okay. These were... We're actually adding on five feet back from the front of the garage. Okay. So that second floor is recessed back. And it's a good looking garage door. Second question has to do with wood. storm water and it may be a question to staff. Is that a requirement needing a calculation? Yeah, that was a tier three stormwater requirement because they went to planning commission and it is does require calculation. Has that and been provided? Prior to final yeah, approval. we have it. We have it there. Okay. Bernie. Why do we have two weather vanes? Let's look at the elevation oh, and figure out. I, I thought we just had one. On I thought we made the requirement of relocating the existing one. Yeah. So, um... I was just looking at one of those sheets over there. Oh, it's sheet A5. Oops. Oh, that's... That's a computer error, sorry. I don't know what he was doing with that. Okay. This is the only weather vane. We're relocating it. Okay. Any other comments or questions? And are you here for uh, final? Yes. Like the final. Uh, yeah. On the first, I do. What sheet number? A sheet A three on the first floor plan. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, on the uh, existing porch, existing dining room. Uh, if you look on sheet A5 south elevation, you have all these do series of doors mm -hmm. on the left. Is that? Yeah, they're they're actually because um, it doesn't seem to match. Or yeah, they're they are bifold doors. Yeah, that one one hinge is open. Oh, I see. So they're bifold in the one one hinge. Can we make comments? You can. We None of us will, but you can. Wait, I have one more question, oh. if you don't mind, Mr. Chair. Go for it. Yeah, this is existing, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you. you. Was that, that your yeah. question? Yeah. Oh. yeah. How quickly we forgot what we were reviewing. <laughs> the doors don't really pop out that much. It's fine. You know, the recess back. Mr. Chair, is this accessible? <coughs> Are people going to be out there? Or? It's right up here in the deck, and it's that was right a here. comment we had as a board because it doesn't follow our guideline. But because this is another house and this is a road, that we felt like this was actually looking out over uh, someone's front yard in public area versus having a deck that was in the back looking into someone's backyard. The other thing was in our guidelines we allow balconies to be less than 15 feet from the property line when it's like three by six and this is three nine by nine so it's it is bigger than what we have as a guideline but in our previous meetings we discussed what it is impacting and, and thought it was not an issue and this project did receive preliminary yeah. approval as well 
No, this is the one. I'll go back to here. Um, this is an existing uh, weather vane that's somewhere else on the house, and we asked him to bring it back. And he brought to us a photograph of it with a dimension earlier in one of our reviews because we wanted to make sure that it would fit size wise and that it wasn't too small. So um, that was one of our concerns. Mr. Miller, any comments or nope. questions? We're ready for a motion if people are. Mr. Chair, I'm ready to make a motion for final approval. Okay. Um, I don't, other than the, the weather vane. With only one weather, weather yeah, vane. Yeah, sort of. The comments of the markups on the plans uh, as submitted. Final approval submitted. Okay. Is there someone who wants to second that motion? Second. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes. Am I the only one that doesn't think the weather vane fits because it's too tall and too much? Because if I am, then I'm going to be outvoted. Well, we actually entertained this prior to giving it preliminary approval. So now it's kind of like it's too late. If you didn't like it back then, then you can still not like it, and that's fine. Um, I think, it, you know, if it's out of scale, we won't put it on. Or, you know, we're possibly get a smaller one. I, I think it adds a little whimsy and fun to the house. Yeah. Uh, architecture needs to have some personality in that no, person. That's a gray, anyway. well, it's a gray area, yeah, true. <laughs> Have different visions. <laughs> okay. So, any other discussion about the motion? We have a first and a second. I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Great. Thank you. All right. And with that, I will close the single family design review board for November 22nd. Have a good night. <laughs>